Okay, right, so um, let's game face, game face. Lemon face, lion face. <laughs> <laughs> Lemon face, lion face. Right? What? <laughs> What's that well, from? It's from like, a Kevin Smith film, isn't it? Uh, no, it's, 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 it's yoga faces. <laughs> what on earth? Lemon face, lion kids? face, lemon face, lion face. Yeah, there you go. Lemon face, lion I'm face. Right, ben, ben, I suggest we just make let's just make that this week. I mean, intro. I'm as lost as you, Dan. It's fine. Don't like, don't feel bad. It's well, like, I mean, I'll try it again. But hello and welcome <laughs> to Les Erdrens. Um uh, Yeah, what the fuck, guys? <laughs> Um, I, I'm Dan, and I am joined, as always, by Ben, James, and Fliss. Say hello, motherfuckers. Hello, hello, hello motherfuckers. motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, that's how we do. That's how we do. Right, good. Um, Jesus Christ. Uh, well, are you all right there, Fliss? I'm just yeah. laughing. Just I almost laugh long. at the beginning. <laughs> Cough. Yeah, try not to cough up a lung. Bit. I know, uh, yeah, so uh, a kind of peculiar start to uh, this week's episode. Uh, you are tuned in, uh, believe it or not, to a perfume podcast, uh, not some random bunch of idiots just kind of like trying to figure out what they're doing. Uh, this is episode 10? Nine. 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 <laughs> Excellent. This is the worst start to any podcast ever. But, but you I'm say that every week, persist. Dan. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. we, I think we give ourselves a run for the money. Y- yeah, I know. I, I do say it each week, and each week it's true, which means things are only moving in one direction. Uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah. So what are we doing? Who are you lot? I don't know. Uh, yes, this is the ninth episode of the second season of Les Odrants. It may well be the last episode if we carry on like this. Unbelievably, we've done many episodes <laughs> yeah. before this one. <laughs> yeah, we have done some others. And, and yeah, I mean, yeah. Who knows? Whatever. Right. Uh, Fliss, let's talk <gasps> about perfume. Yes, I'm coming to you first. Whoa! Because... Whoa! <laughs> right. Tell me about some perfume, what you have been wearing. Go. Okay, cool. So I started my uh, new fortnight with Antonia's Flowers by Bernard Chant, which is a 1985 beautiful fresh spring delight. And it's just freesia heaven. It's hugely discontinued. I've only got a dram left. And I was just like, do I wear it in the spring? Everyone else was doing like May Mouge, which apparently is a thing on Instagram that I didn't know about. Um, but May Mouge. Or Mouge May. I, I, I was like, oh, here's my dearissimo. And I was like, I don't have dearissimo. What the fuck? But I do have Antonia's flowers, which is like a big freesia delight. And it was gorgeous. And it's very, very clean. And it's pink and mm. gentle musk and jasmine and lilies and white flowers. And you just want to be like skipping down the Champs Elysees and ballet slippers in a cashmere shrug with a little like mini Kelly bag in a in a really deeply impractical colour. Have you met me well yes uh, none of this is you none of this is you but this is for yeah, this is good. for the ladies who are listening and it's and ladies the ladies and um i looked up <laughs> recently um because 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 i wore it out i finished my bottle i looked up on ebay how much new bottles are going for and at the moment there are three bottles of antonia's flowers going and they all are over 500 pounds for 50 mil what? i know and what? i was like Fuck off. That's some uh, that's some extremely uh, price, expensive price vintage. Price gouging vintage shit. So then after that, I was like, fuck you cunts. Um, so I looked up Diorissimo and I managed to get my hands on a 50 mil houndstooth bottle of pre-1991 Diorissimo for 40 quid. And it's Ooh, sublime. That's good. Um, that's a yeah, yeah, yeah. A bargain, isn't it? it really was. I don't. I don't know if they kind of miss. I don't know, mislisted it or something because no one else bid on it, and I got it, and I was like, "Is it going to be okay?" Because no one else had bid on it, and I got it, and it's it's fucking gorgeous. It's just like lily of the valley 
heaven. So I kind of don't mind about the Antonia's flowers being used up now. That was okay on me. Mm. Yeah. Oh, well, that sounds like you managed to snag a, uh, a little eBay bargain. I totally there, don't yeah. know how that happened because I think they'd probably go for more than that normally, but it just mm. the gods of perfume were smiling. Um, then I did a very stupid thing. I did a blind buy, which I never do at the moment. Um, but the, the internet was telling me that guidance by Amouage, the old new Quentin Beach release, yeah. Was it, all the girls were like fangirling? There was a load of influencers were just like, "This is the thing! Mm. This is the thing!" And uh, were no, you influenced? I totally was you influenced totally, by the influence. I really was. And uh, Natino yeah. had a tester at a good price, and I stupidly went, "Oh my god, I'm going to buy that!" So I bought it, and then it was very. It's very nice. Um, it's a big. It's it's big sort of sweet floral thing yeah um, there's a very tart fizzy opening uh there's a big pear-y thing at the top and then it's a bit more grapefruity for me i don't get a huge amount there's meant to be this hazelnut note which i didn't really get but there is a mm. green nutty creamy note in the dry down which i felt was a little bit more pistachio um it was nice. It was very, very beige. It was very, very semi gourmand, fluffy, huge sillage, kind of beige ish thing. Beige ish. Beige ish. Beige ish. <laughs> and everyone was like, oh, it doesn't smell like a beige. And I smelt it and I was like, it totally smells like a beige. Um, yeah. And I had it for about three days and I was like, no, nah, and I sold it. Um, oh. Not because I didn't like it, but just because. It wasn't particularly me, and I think I don't. Even though the bottle is very pretty, it's not going to stay in my collection for long. So I just thought, just sell it now, just get rid of it. So I did that. Uh, nice. Yeah, it was easy. I quite liked it. It's the pink bottle. Yeah, the, and it is. It's, it, it, it's pretty, uh, but I, uh, I, as much as I love Amouage, I thought it was a slightly trivial kind of perfume yeah. for them. I, it didn't have. It didn't have the heft I was hoping for. I was expecting mm. a little bit more from it and it just felt a little bit cute and pretty and sweet and nice. And I, I wanted more than nice, to be honest. It was it was just very nice. Well, you're not when, a nice girl, that, I'm not a nice girl. When did that come out? <laughs> it, oh, came, it came out not very long ago. It, it, it was this uh, year. It, yeah, it was released with... Um, uh, the uh, whole purpose. kind of... Yeah. That, there was Purpose... Guidance um, and and two others. So four came out at the same time. They seem to release them in in batches of four. Purpose was another beach one. It was quite incensey um, and uh, quite like fresh um, and a bit weird. Uh, mm. I don't know. It, it wasn't my favourite to be no. honest of of the Amouage. I, I think that that range for me didn't quite. Uh, uh, hit its mark, or at least not with me, anyway. That's what, that's what I kind of felt. I felt like if money was no object, I would keep it because it was very pleasant. For you know, for a nice warm day, for a nice sunny day, it would have been an easy wear. But actually, if you're trying to curate something, or if you just don't have the cash to have that bottle sit around, it wasn't special enough for me to keep it. So I didn't keep it. Mm. Um, not very much any. Not very, very many other things, to be honest. Um, I had a MDCI set that I tried. We talked a little bit about some of it last week. Um, more of the same, a lot of the masculine leathers. Uh, <clears throat> Loma Gant I tried, which was actually quite, I found it quite boring in comparison to the other leathers that they do. Mm. A bit synthetic. Um, and I also tried Le Le Gant which was a nice soft spicy leather but it was it was just nice and soft it wasn't like oh my god i need a bottle um so i kind of feel like in those masculine leathers i feel like i've i've sort of like you know spunked my load with them um <laughs> <laughs> You can't say that I this can't. is a family it's a show, family show. Watch, and then it's done it it's all right no, I didn't. <laughs> um, and then I, I, I received a big Mattier uh, perfume at Gantier kind of thing. It, thing. What's the word? Oh, it's very specific. Well, thing. Fif oh. Fifteen of their 
male leaning line uh, sample set. And sample set? Yeah. yeah. And it was, it, I'm kind of working my way through it and it's all very nice. There's nothing in particular I want to talk about. I just feel like it's all very French classical, but there's nothing yet that I've gone, ooh. I want to. I want to try that more. It's just like that's nice. That's nice. That's nice. So it was a bit, bit of a mech week for me, to be honest, in terms of trying things. That's kind of my load, to be on. I'm done. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that doesn't sound uh, like amazing, if I'm honest. Although, uh, kudos on snagging the uh, Dearissimo. Yeah, Dearissima? that the the, the Dearissimo was my big thing this week, but everything else was a bit like blech. Yeah. yeah. Good. Right. Well, uh, I can offer this week uh, a couple of interesting uh, things what I have tried. Uh, the new uh, uh, Jacques Fath, uh, Iru- uh, ve- no, not the Irish one. <gasps> Sorry. Uh, v- <laughs> Vetiver <laughs> Gris. Uh, although they do, a, they have done a recreation of the uh, Irish Gris. You know uh, that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I-, I haven't tried it. It's it's expensive. I'm I had a little dab. Drunk enough to blind Well, buy I had a little dab uh, sent to me, and it's very nice. Is that the the remake? Mm-hmm. The yeah, okay. Yeah. So it wasn't the yeah. Got it. Uh, yeah, I did wonder. Um, it, is it worth getting? Should I just go and? Oh, I don't know. That? I mean, I think I'm, it's like a thousand pounds or something for f- not very much. Oh, uh, <laughs> what, what is this? Again? Yeah, it's it is. Like... That's. This is uh, Jacques Jacques Fath. I'm going to look uh, it They've up. recreated uh, Irish Green. Ah, right. Um, and but it's in two formats. You can get it in the oil, which is the sort of thousand pound yeah. malarkey, or you can get an EDP spray, which is like two hundred and fifty ah, quid right. or something. Yeah. I think it's two hundred fifty quid for like thirty mil though. Yeah, so it's not like uh, you're getting a, a vast amount of perfume. Uh, that said, thirty mil of anything will last me a lifetime. But the um, but the vetiver gris, I rather like. I think I can't quite get my head around it. It's there's quite a lot going on uh, with it, and it's more it's more complicated than most of the other uh, Jacques Fath uh, perfumes that I've tried. Um, but th- there's a sort of weird, almost kind of that baccaratty sort of sweetness to it with a vetiver. Um, and then, I don't know, some sort of green, it's not labdanum, but a sort of greenness as well at the top. And it somehow really works. Um, I rather like it. Um, it looks quite sweet for a vetiver perfume. Yeah, yeah, and it is, it is, because it's got that sort of um, whatever Baccarat Rouge is, a sort of candy floss, saffron-y thing going on. Um uh, but it's it's very nice. It's it's really enjoyable. But it's not. I don't know. It, it's it's not a super obvious perfume, even though it's got elements of of what you might sort of call mainstream stuff. Um, it actually, I think, uh, ticks quite a lot of boxes. I'll, I'll send some samples out for you guys because I'm mm. I'm sure you'd like to try it. But um, uh, I managed to get a sort of reasonably priced bottle of that. Although I say reasonably priced, I don't even know what the retail is, but I paid £80, which is not... <gasps> that seems very good. As, yeah, that didn't strike me as insane. Um, so just going to chuck this out there, and, hmm. and like, judging, like just judging purely from the note listing, which obviously doesn't tell us not even a fraction hmm. of the story, but it's got a lot of ever hmm. and a lot of orange, and it says bitter orange. So does it avoid the obvious tear them as... Yes, Associations, it, it completely. Oh, cool. it, it, cool. it, it doesn't seem anything like Ter Dermes. It's um, mm. who's the perfumer again? It's the same guy. Who did uh, is it Ero? Is it Jean Claude or Jean Christophe uh, Ero? Jean Christophe Ero. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's the same guy uh, who did Aventus, and um, uh, one of my mates just ev- everything uh, Ero uh, releases just gets bought immediately, um, and and he's been advocating for this for some time i i think there is a yeah it, it's it's an excellent perfume but it's also um it's also interesting because for me you know I, I i've got probably the most conservative taste out of the four of us and um and it is sort of it has conservative sort of mainstreamy elements to it whilst not being a fucking snooze fest mm. I, I do think mm. you'll like it 
Um, the other one that I've been wearing, in fact, I'm wearing at the moment, is Trudon De. Um, <laughs> yes, by Lynn Harris. Um, and I don't know. I, I, I feel like I've yet to find a Lynn Harris perfume. I mean, they're all very good, right? So, so I, I kind of, I, every Lynn Harris perfume I've tried, I sort of nod and go, yep. Brilliant, you know, yeah. really clever. Well, well done, you know, mm-hmm. really well executed. Emotionally, yeah. not a, not a shred of resonance for me. I don't know why they don't. They just don't seem to do it for me. They all of Lynn Harris's compositions to me are are far too deft and you know uh, light touch and and elegant and and you know a lot of the time I don't want elegant. I want to be fucking. <gasps> Slap, slapped up across the head. Because I think you do like elegant, though. But I know exactly what you mean, because I've had so many of her stuff go through my collection, but I don't have anything in my collection. And it's all in, like, little 10-mil vials that I've kept back. And the dirt I've also bought and then sold on. And Mm. I completely agree with you. There's, There's something slightly cold about them in terms... Just none of it really makes me go... Mm, and the dirt mm. is is incredibly good. It's like this photorealistic. It feels like you're walking through a wood or a fresh cut park or, you know, this like mm. lawny feeling. It's very, very green. Yes. But it just doesn't move me to want to smell like that. No, mm. no. And, 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 <laughs> and I, I kind of, um, uh, I, I, it, the perfumes strike me as being technically brilliant. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. There, there's just a sort of to me. Uh, I don't detect any warmth or character from them particularly, yeah. and 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 I know others do. So I'm not saying there is an absence or, or of character or anything like that. I wouldn't be so presumptuous as to fucking slag off uh, uh, Lynn Harris. But um, for me, I just don't get any personal connection to them, and 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 I think that's why I. It's just. It's really handsome. It's really mm. well done. I should like it. I, I do like it, but I don't love it. I feel the same about everything that I've smelt of her. Everything. Is, just, I just, I just, no, all of her stuff is just think, this is really, really good. I should like it more than I do. And then I just mm. can't bring myself to like it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I, James, I'm I'm wondering what your take on Lynn Harris is because I mean y- you've you've probably got a fairly good measure of Lynn Harris as a perfume, uh, right? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, I know what you mean, though. I know what you mean. She's kind of at home with. I don't even know. I don't even know what her style is because she does like you know a broad sort of range of perfumes, but they all have like. Uh, a signature sort of thing to them which uh says a lot because that's a really hard thing to do as a perfumer one mm. thing is to have you know a kind of uh, uh you know a style or whatever and i think the the main the main one that i think is the, the i think the only one that i can think that i own really uh is fui de tabac um it's the mm-hmm. miller yeah, harris one miller harris um which is wonderful um, but I can't really think of any others that have like blown me away. But she seems to be at home with those kind of more, like almost like a kind of somber sort of mood of like t- tobacco, but not like that warm like sort of uh, corny tobacco, if you like. More of like, hmm. uh, yeah, like, almost like herbal, like tea or something like that. Like she's got those kind of like vibes to her. So they're not immediately like. Lovable, and then I'm trying to think about her florals and stuff. I don't know. I don't know really. I d- I don't. Know. I always feel there's a little bit of dirtiness missing, and even in Lair de Reine, which is like the dirty one, yeah, it's not that dirty. Yeah. To be fair, mm. I just feel like it just it's just missing a bit of yeah, a bit polite. And, um, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd go with that. It's not quite yeah. as polite as Joe Malone. No. But it's mm. like that. Yeah, just it just lacks that. Yeah, slightly that's cooler, safe. Joe Malone. Is, that's, that's a low bar, though. That isn't is it? low bar. Yeah, I didn't mean that, Lynn. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Well, that was uh, the two of most interest, I guess, for me uh, recently. Um, yeah. Let's uh, 
let's talk about Ben. What have you been wearing, Ben? Well, you know, the weather's been beautiful the last few days, right? Well, maybe down south. Week, it's been yeah. fucking bobbins up north, as usual. Oh, well, I'm sorry to say it's been fucking gorgeous down fucking here. Gorgeous. Uh, fucking gorgeous. Fucking gorgeous. And uh, so I've been wearing Kel K. Fleur oh. by <gasps> began, uh, Really? The original X-Stray. Yeah. I fucking love that shit. It's one. I, it's is that a, like super version. aldehyde for you? Yeah, but I, I oh, don't know. Oh, Ben, you fucking do it. my nothing. You like you hate aldehydes, <laughs> you do, and then you're like, you just, oh yeah, I just wear the Coca Flat. I'm like, what the fuck? You just went all <laughs> West Country there for a minute. You do my nothing. <laughs> Not another one. <laughs> I just, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. What's going on, Ben? Um, I don't know. I just fucking love it. I've, I've, I, I, I think I've spoken about this one before. Like, I was going to kind of breeze over it, but it's just so fucking good. It's, um, yeah, it's like a, a sort of aldehylic, but, but there's something that's... Okay, so what I love about it, right, is it, it balances, like, it walks a few lines really fucking well. So it's obviously like a really big, like, aldehylic floral, but at the same time, it's like, it's not dense or heavy or thick. And there's like this beautiful like greenness to it, but it's not too green. And there's like a little bit of skank, but it's not too skanky. It's, you know, it's, it's very like well behaved and polite. It's just, I, I feel like when you, when you wear it, it just, I really like the invigorating uplifting-ness of the, the florals. I mean, you know, you know, I mean, Lily, I don't like Lily the Valley perfumes, do you know what I mean? But, and, and it's quite a big like feature of this one. But it just works in this. I just like it as a whole. I just really like it. it just it's 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 the X straight version, which is like super expensive. I think I've mm. only got like little ten mil travel out of my roll of it mm. because fuck spending four hundred pound on a perfume, which I'm sure we'll come to later. But um, <laughs> it's uh, you know I just I just love it. I, I don't class know what it's like compared though. to class the toilets is, or any of that. Class. That's it. Do mm. you know what I mean? This is what it's about with perfumes. Yeah. We're not necessarily, oh, I go around going, oh, yeah, I love Lily of the Valley or Two Bros or whatever. Um, but you find a good perfume or you say, oh, I don't like this or I don't like that. And it turns out you actually do if it's in the right context. Yeah. And Kel Fleur couldn't be any more um, complex and, like, it changes to, like, loads of different, like, things. Um, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. I'll tell you what else about it as well that I really, like, I find really good. It's, it, for, for, you know, it's just that it's clearly a big feminine floral, but at the same time, it's it's not that feminine. Like, I think it. I think for, if you're like a, a bloke, right, and you kind of fancy, like, wearing, like, you know, maybe dipping your toe in, like, perfumes marketed towards women or whatever, I think it would be a great one for, like, to, you know, like, wet your whistle with because... Although it's clearly like, you know, a big white floral, it's got this kind of like mossy element to it that's like, I don't know, somehow it just drags it back. I just, I'm, just, I'm just completely confused now because after the aldehydes, when you were just like, <laughs> fuck aldehydes, they're all shit. I hate them all. They make me sad and grumpy. Yeah. And now you're so, like, so, oh, Kelka Fleur. But this, but, okay, but this doesn't <laughs> smell like, uh, Kelka Fleur doesn't smell like a funeral, like, like a procession or or like a funeral home or anything you know it's it's very like uplifting and alive and vibrant and you know like like so and, 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 the other oh, thing sorry, that bothers you. me sorry <laughs> about about what <laughs> fliss just said is is how like how you seem to expect consistency from no ben, i don't from expect ben consistency people. from ben of all people of course i don't expect <laughs> consistency but if someone had said to me Here's 50 quid. Does Ben like Kelka Fleur? I'd have gone, no, fucking give me the 50 quid. And now I learn I don't get the 50 quid. I just don't understand it. I'd have been like dead cert. (laughs) I own two travel sprays of the thing. Jesus Christ. Well, there's there's a Christmas quiz. uh, uh, (laughs) For for 50 pounds, does Ben either A... Love Kelka Fleur. B. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I've, I've, I've lost. I'm out of the game. You will. You will move through to round two, and I don't. <laughs> I think it's. I think it's way too feminine, Ben. I mean, I, really? I, 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 yeah, I have tried it, and I, I like it for it being a perfume. But I mean, it, it, it is arguably the most feminine floral, uh, you know, that I could think of, really. Oh, okay. 
Do you not think like with the kind of like mossiness, it's like you could like rock it? Or no. No. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm just gonna say no. Yeah, no. I I, I don't oh, think I enough. could. I I mean, but I I as 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 I kind of find myself saying a lot, I'm easily the most conservative uh, in my taste of the four of us. Um, and I think. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I can appreciate a lot of perfumes. I can really appreciate the Dana Taboo. Um, I wouldn't wear it. I couldn't wear it. Um, <laughs> yeah. In the same way that I can't wear Kelke Fleur, I, I don't think. Um, although I, I do remember James saying once, you know, sometimes he just likes to feel like a, a, an 80s woman in a power suit, you know, with shoulder pads. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and why not indeed? Well, so anyway, so moving on uh, from that one then, just to sort of like uh, further throw the inconsistency, um, the other perfume that I've been wearing quite a lot of uh, was is a Zergeoff uh, Cruz de, de la Sur 1, right? Now, this is... Is that the mango-y one? No, it's an important yeah. distinction. Cruz de la Sur 2 is that one, and it's trash. And it's <laughs> yeah. that's the one that a lot of people tend to sort of gravitate towards because it's sort of sweet and fruity and obvious. Ick. Cruz de la Sur 1 is like a very raw sort of vegetal leather with very dried, I think they call it a wine note, but it's like dried, rich dried fruits and also castorium, this smoky castorium. And I fucking love it. Do you know what? It's like, I've had it for ages and I sort of forgot about it. But for me, it's like, when you say niche perfumery, I feel like it's the real definition of that in the sense that it, it it's quite a nice perfume. It's not it is a perfume. Do you know what I mean? It smells good. Like mm. but it but it walks the line, you know. It 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 it's got this weird smoky note to it, you know, from the castorium and it's quite rich and thick and you know, it's not easy. It's not an easy going fragrance. It's it's but it's quite nice, really. It's not... So, you know, like a lot of the perfumes that I like that are like, you would say, are challenging or whatever, they're not, just not very nice perfumes, to be fair. Do you know what I mean? I mean, they would. some people would say they're not even perfume. Whereas this is... Do you know what I mean? This clearly mm. is perfume. It smells good. Um, but it's not easy at the same time. It's, so, it's good. So I had a message from um, uh, a guy who listens, uh, a chap called uh, Noah. Um, hello, Noah, if he's still listening. Um, and he said when we did when we did the episode about collections, uh, he sent me a message saying I knew Ben's uh, <laughs> most kind of uh, uh, the house that Ben's got the most of was Zergeoff. It's like, do you not listen to your friend on the podcast? <laughs> He's told you this several times, and yet you were surprised by it. It's like, oh well, obviously someone's listening better than I am. Um, that still bothers me that Zergeoff is the most uh, <laughs> populous, the most voluminous, whatever the word is, uh, uh, the most high frequency. I'm going to get stuck on finding the exact statistical word here, but uh, it bothers me that that's the, the, the thing that you've got most of in your collection. Well, we'll come I back to this weird. later, I think, because um, because it's it's kind of, yeah, because there is... There's a Zergeoff I, snobbery. Yes! Well, almost opposite, and but we'll come back to that later, because I, mm. I it's quite an interesting point. Uh, anyway, so the reason I was wearing that Zerdoff, um was because I tried the new Galavant that Nick sent us, that James arranged, um, and uh, it reminded me a little bit of that, uh, ah. that, that Zerdoff. But we'll talk about that Galavant uh, next week, I think, when uh, we've all yes. received them. Yes, once everyone's got them in the house. Um, cool. Cool. Uh, all right. So apart from the Zergeoff and your Kelke Fleur, anything else uh, exciting? Nothing exciting, unfortunately. Nothing exciting. Well, well it's good weather. Yeah, loads of fucking crackers, but I think I've spoken about them all before, so, yeah. Mm. Fair enough. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, well, uh, James uh, James is uh, doing some uh, press-ups, warming up, I can see, getting ready to fucking unload <laughs> the full 14. Uh, right, so first day, I wore Frederick Mild Geranium Pour Arm because we were talking about it. Toothpaste! Yeah, toothpaste. Uh, inspired by you know toothpaste and mouthwash, my favourite mouth. Mouthwash. Blah blah blah. We know it's great. It's excellent. Um, then I wore. Mm-hmm. Uh, you always hate this name because it's like I think it's the way I pronounce it. Ted Lapidus <laughs> or Lapidus. <laughs> Lapidus Lapidus. 
can't be libidos. <laughs> that can't. It's not libido. That cannot Why possibly be. Um, <laughs> that can't be how you pronounce. You cannot lapidus? possibly be called. It's got to be lapidus, like or, lapidus. or lapidu like or something. Anyway. <laughs> I bet you do, darling. <laughs> So Black Soul. Yeah. Hey everybody, James likes Lapidus. <laughs> it's called Black Soul. Um, it's pretty rubbish, but it's one of those like <laughs> really um, like I hear like. That sounded it's like Magnum um, PI, wasn't it? It sounded like the eight. Oh, Magnum. Yeah, Magnum. I think it was Magnum. Yeah, I was, it was for some reason, I was going to say eighteen. I, um, in fairness, that'll probably sound better to everybody on the actual <laughs> podcast than it does to us because because won't. we're listening to you shout into a phone <laughs> from a distance oh no okay it won't okay, fair enough no, yeah right so um i that's why i was here in my head it's kind of like a hairy chested like ridiculous hawaiian shirted job it's like a big floral like men's floral but it's kind of gross and sort of like rubbery and it's just it's outrageous Lapidus. It's like bubble gummy sort of like mm-hmm. i don't know white floral kind of thing but it's like rubbery and fucking relentless and but it's it's weirdly brilliant um and i just like wearing it <laughs> they're all a bit like that. <laughs> weirdly brilliant yeah, so you, that that weirdly brilliant review came out of nowhere that wasn't how i was expecting well, it to end. i own it i wore it I'm not a completely, you know, like, well, actually, you weren't to know that. A lot of the time I wear samples, but, like, I do own that. It's, like, about, it's one of them that's about 12 quid or something for, like, you know, a 100 mil yeah. bottle or whatever. The bottle's sort of a weird yeah. shape. It's kind of, like, it's, it's quite, kind of cool, but it's sort of, anyway, let's move on. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, whether or not Black Soul's a good name, Lapidus is a bad name. So, uh, yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll, then we'll I wore Costume on. National scent. What? Sorry, just re- remind me. You mentioned the other week something called unidentified scented yeah, object. Yeah. Was that Costume National? Or was Kenzo? That, who was that? Oh. oh, it was Kenzo. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I still yeah, want I, that. I want just that the quite badly. But anyway. <laughs> uh, <Yeah. laughs> okay, sorry, we uh, digress. So tell us about the Costume National one. Kind of got... It's it's like a Costume National perfume, right? They all kind of have this, like... I don't want to say it, but, you know, this kind of similar vibe. Um, it's a sort of fruity... There's a kind of, like... It's, it's, it's a distinct apple note, right? And they don't really particularly like that in perfumery that much. It's almost like something like that, but then it's got this kind of yop arm, like, meets, like, Bertrand Dasher 4, like, modern. Uh, it's, like, really obviously synthetic. It's like that kind of, um, like, that hibiscus, um, like, stuff that you put in champagne. Do you know, like, Chambord or whatever. It's a bit mm. like that. Um, but it's kind of spicy and it's got a bit of like cinnamon warmth to it. Do you know like the um, Costume National Arm? You know, like their first one? Or is it called 21? Yeah. They've got, I fuck knows with them. They're all, they're kind of similar though. They're this modern, relentless, weird fragrance. You're selling it. You're selling it. No, I like them. I like them a lot. They're kind of like, like I say, they sort of remind me, it's not by Bertrand Dash 4 because I looked it up. Um, but it reminds me of that kind of like style. Um, so yeah, kind of fruity, weird job. Um, very much in their style. Uh, yeah, sorry, it was called Scent Intense, that one. So maybe check it out, maybe mm. don't. I don't know. Uh, so anyway. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh cool. and then on the same day, sorry, so it might be 15. I wore Mont Blanc <laughs> Individuel on the same day because it was kind of reminding me those sort of... Uh, like you um like vibes and i'd worn the other one the other week presence mont blanc presence which i see as a kind of sister brother fragrance to um individual and uh, uh it's similar in that in that sense it's almost like cinnamony like cinnamal a uh, little bit of clove but like a little bit just like a spicy nuance to it um, but with this like main sandalwood kind of core, 
I mean, everyone sort of goes on. Like, I used to think, oh, yeah, all of those creeds, this ties back to another thing that I'm wearing today, actually. But, like, all of those creeds mainly are better than the other one, you know, the Green Irish Tweed or the whatever they were from other brands, you know what I mean? Even if they're by the same perfumer mm. or what, th- those things. Yeah. The Santal, whatever, what is it called? Original Santal? Is it, it, yeah. That is like, I always was like, yeah, that's well better than individual. But to the point where they're both quite shit, so just buy individual, like, why? You know what I mean? Even if yeah. it's like a few percent better from Creed, I, I yeah I hate yeah they're both. both rubbish. I just yeah. uh, they're, ugh, there's something I don't know what it is. There's a, a, a commonality. I'll to say them something. Bounce is just dryer yeah. sheets. Yeah, which wouldn't be so bad if it didn't have this sort of. I don't know. There's there's something in there that's just like. Um, I don't know. It's like if it was an orchestra. There's some cunt playing out of time, <laughs> and and it just and it just it, this there's just something like going, yeah, like, it does. Yeah, stop making that it noise. Does do that. Yeah, that that exact little. <laughs> that's exactly what it what it is. Hmm. Um. So anyway, yeah. So I wore that. Uh. Then I wore um Atelier de Or, uh, Queer Sacra. Sacred. Ben leather. knows about these, don't you, Ben? Yeah, but I was about to say, funny enough, I, I've never actually smelt that one, but I like the brand a lot. So I and I, I'm willing to believe it. Well, it's a load of shit. Good. No, it's not really. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I'm joking. It's good. It's good. Because uh, everything I've smelt from them has honestly been like pretty much like top tier. Um, I just think they're brilliant. They are good. Mm. Yeah, they are very good. Uh, I, I, yeah, sort of uh, representing for the uh, uh, the opposition. Uh, I'd like to say I'm I'm yet to discover one that I thought was anything better than you know fair to middling. Really? Mm. Yeah, I've tried a few. Um, I can't even remember which ones, but well, none that of them have... which everyone is is everyone's darling. Uh, that, that was too, way too saccharine for me. Mm. Just that's yeah, your darling I mean... as well, Ben. Don't say everyone's darling. Oh, That's I fucking you. love Lou yeah. I think it's brilliant. But I mean, it, but it, like in like you know, it's the one that everybody. It loves. just seemed like such a fucking straightforward vanilla. Blob. Mm, I think it's the cardamom that makes it somewhat, you know, interesting. But mm. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. But it's, there you go. Anyway, um, this has a really nice oh. leather note accord. Sorry, <laughs> uh, and it also like starts off. There's a little bit of something challenging, sort of with the opening. You're kind of a bit like, mm, where where is this going to go? Uh, and then by the time it's sort of dried down, it's much more polite. Um, it's clearly got like a sort of classical uh quite realistic leather base to it uh, i thought it was very good i thought it was very good um mm. nothing again to particularly write home about um but i thought it was it was solid perfumery uh and not the standard sweet leather that you might get or whatever the actual leather note was impressive i thought and kind of lasted so i was i was i, I liked it um, then I wore cool. Penhaligon's Blenheim Bouquet. Hmm. Uh, I've never tried that one, but I've always sort of wanted to. Is no, it? I'd cop? avoid it, shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, fair enough. It I, almost I sounds like bothered. really bland. It is. It is. Blenheim it's bouquet. so bland. Yeah. Again, I did that stupid thing that I was saying about the other week where I walked around and I've got these little mini, they're like a... Have you seen the mini Penhaligon's bottles? I don't think they really yeah. do them anymore, but yeah. they've got a little stopper yeah. in the top. And uh, mm. I stupidly like put some on and then went, oh, this might not last today. I'll put it in my pocket. And then I took it and it just leaked all over the gaff. So like, I ended up stinking of it um, like unnecessarily. Um, but yeah, it's yeah. very soapy, uh, cheap smelling sort of like lemon and soapy sort of stuff um it's not it's not great um for me it's the epitome of um like the the kind of stereotype that penhalicans have sort of garnered over the years yeah. as being like just a kind of very bland soapy barbershop that lasts about 15 minutes and then it's fucking gone anyway yeah uh, and deeply yeah. pleasant pleasant is the right mm. word i, I actually mm. thought that i liked it a lot more than Deep. i did i had like kind of 
sweeter like recollections of it uh, than actually transpired on this day. So before this, I'd have gone, oh, yeah, Blenheim Buco. It's got like, you know, slight little floral element. No, I'm fed up of it now. I never want to <laughs> see it, wear it again. It can fuck off. So uh, then I wore a oh. Gucci Pour Om 2. Have we really talked about that? The... Um, I don't think yeah. so, but it's the sort of it's the it's I don't know I it, it, I think people sort of love it because it's discontinued and related to yeah. Gucci Pour on One. Is it discontinued? Uh, it's yeah. oh yeah yeah because people it's, it's, thought yeah it's the can blue I just say, the blue T one it was discontinued for years and it wasn't so. It definitely, it definitely is, is now. now, yeah. I would have thought yeah, it would be. Yeah. Um, but, like, a lot of people did think that years ago, and it wasn't. It's still... It was the one that they kept on from all those old ones. So you thought, does it sell? Is it successful? Have they just got loads of these? The only thing I'll say about it, we won't talk about the Violet Leaf or any of this, Leo T or whatever. I think that... It's quite an important fragrance in quite a lot of ways. So it has this little spice accord that's within it. I don't know who made it. I can't remember who made it. Um, but it's kind of similar in a sort of light, slightly tweaked version of kind of like Spice Bomb a little bit. So it's got this sort mm -hmm. of pink peppery um, uh, kind of vibe. Um, just within all that, like, tea, it's a lot more uh, spooky and weird, and that's what I like about it, the violet and the kind of tea and stuff. I said I wasn't going to get into that. The main thing about it is that if a burglar comes into your house, uh, that is like, the, just reach for that fucking thing, because it is like Yeah, uh, sharp as weapon. fucking anything. Yeah, knows. yeah absolutely. Uh, I feel like maybe I should fucking revisit that yeah. one now. I, I do like it. As mm. There's some very expensive ones on it's eBay. Decent. It's mm. decent. Yeah. So anyway, uh, then I wore uh, Amouage Lyric Man, which we've talked about. Uh, a listener who I don't think I even know his name, so it's not like I'm forgetting his name. Uh, shout out to you. <laughs> Uh, shout out to you, mate. Shout out, uh, shout out to He'll someone. Know who he is. If He'll that's know someone, who he is. it's you. Um, yes, he's he's basically said to me, uh, "Oh, what, is Lyric Man any good?" And he's well into like, "Oh, I want it to really last and be really strong." And I think stuff that I've said, "Oh, yeah, is really strong." He's like, "No, that's like pussy." shit <laughs> but will it last yeah it's yeah. like he really but will likes it last the will it will like it perform stuff and i said well yeah you know the new version of this i have slightly rose tinted kind of no like pun intended uh of you know a view of uh the original like lyric which has definitely been uh certainly toned down a little bit for just out and this is me saying this uh it's still really strong still lasts just spray a bit more I remember I literally just used to have to do like two sprays or whatever and it would just be beaming off me like all day. So they've definitely changed it since the the plastic cap, you, you know, the magnetic cap one's the new one. Uh, but it's still really good. Just spray more. It still hmm. totally represents the, the, the fragrance, but it's just maybe a little bit not quite as strong. Um, so that was kind of that. But it's a beautiful trail of like soapy rose and uh, uh olibanum and it's just it's magic that perfume magic lyric hmm. man Stunning. magic lyric then man. i wore initio okay, cool. which is a brand that i would probably go oh they you know oh you said you hated clones and you fucking hypocrite mm -hmm. uh initio musk therapy is okay it's a quite boring musk fragrance uh, you know, enough with the fucking mosques. It's pretty, like, it's supposed to be simple, but it's not really that simple to do a, a stripped-back good one. Uh, and, yeah, it kind of reminds me of some other ones, but not quite slightly tweaked. It's very good. It's very good. So, you know, all Is brands... I, I don't think I've tried yeah, that Yeah, all one. brands can have their day, you know? Uh, and it, it, oh, yeah. even if they're, you know, uh, ones that have been uh, previously rebuked, um, you know, that 
<laughs> rebuked by yeah, the exactly. arbiter. No, no, the, none of them are too. Uh, I can't think of the expression. Uh, like deserving of praise or not? I, I don't know what I'm saying. Um, anyway, so <laughs> choose, and then I, then I wore a uh, com de garçon rouge, which is a nice combination of. Uh, rhubarb and beetroot. Who the fuck knew that goes together? Well, it really does really well. Uh, I had an afters. I always go on about this afters. I went to a Michelin star restaurant once in my fucking life. Uh, two star restaurant, which I always dine out on literally for fucking years. I've been going, oh, yeah. yeah. Like, do you remember when I went there? Oh, uh, yeah. And I had this well, afters. We remember when. Fucking amazing. And it was. Uh, do you say afters? <laughs> you meant like a like pudding? A pudding ah. dessert. No, yeah. dessert. Who pudding afters? Oh my god! Who are what? you people? It's just a, dessert. At a surely. Two star restaurant as yeah. well. Surely wait, it's wait, just what dessert. What you got for afters? Got any? Got any vanilla ice cream out there? <laughs> out back. So, I anyway, it was lovely, and it was, it was. Um, <laughs> He's not taking the bait, is he? It, it was uh, rhubarb, beetroot, and like bee pollen or some bullshit like that, and stuff, and. Oh, it was incredible because you ate it and you got all the like tartness uh, of the the rhubarb, and then all of a sudden you sat there and you're like, "What? It tastes like beetroot now. What's going on?" Um, and it was oh, it was stunning. So, uh, so so beetroot. Um, apropos of nothing at all, but beetroot is one of a couple of things that I spent my entire life thinking I hated. Right up until the point that my wife made me try it, and then I went, oh no, I actually really like that. Um, so be- the the ones that stick in my mind are beetroot and milk in my coffee. Like for some reason, I've been drinking black coffee since like the age of kind of sixteen, and like in my late thirties, I suddenly discovered I liked milk in my <laughs> coffee. That's fucking st- That's I, stupid. I've, just just to be, for clarification, I've just looked up on. Uh, at school uk and a dessert is a sweet that you use a knife and fork to cut so fruit or anything else a knife and fork and a pudding is something that you use a spoon for and, Wait, you use a knife and a fork uh, to eat and, fruit and, uh, you do if you are correct yes. what one uh. one does and, one and does. What, what's it say about <laughs> and, and what's it just, just, just. Sorry, while you're on etiquette, what's it say? Afters are. Well, it, it doesn't actually mention. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you mean? It. What do you mean? It doesn't have an afters. It doesn't. It doesn't have. It, it doesn't say anything well, about a afters. Well, big one for me. You're, you're saying this now, Dan. Fucking ripping me down for the afters. Hmm? I say right. How do you eat bread I pudding? say house coat right for like a like a. Yeah, house you, coat. Dressing, dressing gown, gown. Right. People say, "Ooh, dressing gown." I'm yeah. like, "Oh, dressing gown." It's a house coat, isn't it? Right. So here's another one: uh, ice, ice lolly, or no, lolly well, you've ice. You've got me on this one before. Scousers do say lolly ice. I probably said it. I think when I said it on this, it, it was just the, probably the first time I've ever said lolly. I don't know. Lolly I, ice. I don't say that. I would say ice lolly. Right. Um, but yeah. you did pick me up on that once. And you were like, "Oh, you're <laughs> such a fucking scouser and all this." And I was like, <laughs> I'm not. I probably, like I say, never said that before. But anyway, yeah, no, they do tend to say it the other way around. Um, but no, the house coat one, because Elliot, I think Elliot calls it house coat now. And uh, someone else said it, and I was like, yeah. Like, you know, someone, some kid in, like, you know, one of his friends or something. I was like, their parents say it as well. They're right as well. So... Um, not that there's okay, any right So I'm just checking again on Etiquette UK. And a housecoat is a shorter fitted garment which is meant to be worn around the house. Where a dressing gown is a robe that is solely worn in the bedroom or bathroom and is often a long flowing robe. And a housecoat is shorter and more fitted. Oh, OK. There you go. Yeah. Anything else? <laughs> I'm ready. My fingers are ready. My fingers are ready. <laughs> so have you, have you guys tried uh, Comme de Garçon Rouge? Let's get back to perfume. Have you tried Comme de Garçon Rouge? I haven't. Uh, I was, but I do th- like. So, so the one that like you were talking about beetroot was a uh, Kyoto by Diptyque, but I think it might be uh, like similarities to it. I don't know. Um, like to Comme de Garçon Rouge, probably. Uh, it's sort of like a woody. Uh, 
supposedly like rose and incense and vetiver thing, but it's um, it's, it's not quite. It doesn't come across like that. It's the rose comes across quite forefront, but the 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 the, the, the woodiness and the vetiver is. Uh, it reminded me of a Comme des Garcons fragrance in that weird sort of like industrial process wood vibe that CDG fragrance that's, is quite. Yeah, at. that's kind of the <laughs> that is the uh, the mo for this one. Um, yeah, it's. I didn't like Dip- Kyoto Dip- <laughs> Dip- I thought that was crap, but um, and and the beetroot was like really like not enough. Um, but I don't know. Say what's Rouge like? Good. Um, yeah, Je- Jenny didn't like it. <laughs> like, well, I was yeah, gonna. That's, I don't know, I'm not gonna share probably... intimate stories on here. We we've been. Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, that would be out of character, wouldn't it? I yeah, mean, so let's not. Ben, so, ben, ben never does that. Then I wore uh, Les Inimitables, um, Ombre Supreme, um, which I've got to say to Fliss, because I sent this to Fliss. Uh, she wore it and said, hey, that's not really my bag, and like sent it back. And then I was like, okay, I, how can she not like this? It's fucking amazing perfume. And it is, but I don't think I like it either now. Mm. I, I I got a bit so I got a bit tired of it. I think it is mm. a brilliant perfume, but I got a bit tired yeah. of it, and uh, I ended up selling mine. Uh, it's for me, it wasn't the standout of the range. No, no, it isn't. It's it's still got those same materials. And what's amazing, what I love is that I only bought a travel size one. No, I didn't buy it. They sent it to me. Thank you very kindly to Les Nemandables. They just sent me a little uh, travel size. And they sent me the um, the ambergris tincture, you know, of the uh, ultra oh, yeah, ambergris. Yeah. So I was like, I can it, the the thread going through this. I mean, you didn't have to send me the ambergris tincture. I can smell it in the perfume. It is really impressively uh, got that that ambergris quality, which is such a weird quality, and it's so wonderful in perfume. But when it's kind of in the forefront and so obvious like that, it's not always uh, necessarily that, I don't know, like wearable, I don't know, with with all the warmth of the, the other sort of ambery elements. It's a great perfume, though, it really is. I mean, as soon as you smell it, you're like, mm. this is great, but it does make you sort of it, tap out. For afterwards. me, it, it kind of, it, 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 it reeks, obviously, in a perfume way. It, it reeks, reeks of quality. Yeah. It reeks of quality, but it. I didn't feel it moved me or that it stood out enough for me to go, yeah, I'm going to shell out for a, for a bottle. Yeah. And it, I felt a bit sad in a way because I kind of like, I really love that brand mm. and I was kind of expecting more, but I just was just a bit like, it's lovely. It's amazing and lovely, but I just, yeah. yeah you can't, you can't make, you know, a thriller or a bad every time. Can you, do you know what I mean? No, you um, can't. Just to come <laughs> back to our MJ. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> do, you, do you reckon MJ and uh, Ted Lapidus were uh, friends? I'm, I'm, okay, I'm prepared to bet that. they were. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Ormond Jane Woman, or is it called Ormond Woman? Oh. Fucking love that Ormond Woman. Yeah, um, it's it's a bit of a P.T. Barnum job, right? Because it's kind of one of these like minimal things, but it's lots of things to different people. Like I don't really know what that perfume is particularly. Uh, it smells. To me, it's very it's appealing. It's very appealing, but it's that modern like style of uh, molecule business that's like felt very. It's very geyserish. Uh, it's very, it? very, and that's what I mean. It's something for everybody. They're they're extracting what you want to take from it, and that's probably that's probably fucking genius. In fact, but to me. Mm. It's like not quite distinctive enough. Don't get me wrong. I love it. It's musky. It lasts all day. It's got like really interesting like facets and I can't place what's going on. So I love that about it. But, and I also, I love really modern perfumes as well. So I'm not saying it's bad at all. Far from it. Right. I enjoyed it and everything, but I just, the thing that I take from it is like confused. I take loads of things from it and I don't, nothing that really like nourishes my soul i think if you put it against something like bois de Ile or bois d'adrienne it comes across a little bit lacking yeah. there's just a little bit of bite at the bottom or just a little bit of ah that i felt was missing sure. and it's 
I, I feel the same way about you. I think it's excellent, but I just didn't connect with it. Okay, cool. Hmm. I thought it was bloody brilliant. It was one of the mm. best things I smelt last year that, you know, when we, from all the samples and stuff that we sent each other, I think Dan sent mm. a sample of it. It's one of the yes. best things I smelt all year. It was fucking brilliant. And it, the, the opening is so unique. I've never smelt anything like it. Mm. I, I, I think it's, I think it's super duper as well. Um, although, uh, weirdly, they, they do, um, they did an elixir one, which is like a sort of super strength version um, you know, like the Amouage x rates kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was a sort of hybrid of the Almond Jane man and Almond Jane woman, but then with this sort of giant slug of kind of oud in it as well. And it didn't quite work. I, th- I think, you know, the 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 man and the woman, I think, are, are both brilliant. And I think they go together so brilliantly as well. Um, but uh, they they didn't they didn't need to be tink- tinkered with in my I can't idea. Im- Imagine with the oud because they're both so airy in many respects. That kind of yeah. popping that yeah, sub, popping right. that basin seems to be a bit. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I haven't smelt it, so I'm just burbling. I thought, I thought that personally, what exactly what Dan said about the uh, the oud or the like, slightly different versions that they did um, of perfumes where they added an oud note. I felt it was quite. It, it was clearly real oud, right? And this is one of the problems with mm-hmm. working with um, materials like that that are so complex and dominant and whatever. And it kind of add like a, this this oud element to it, and it'd last for a bit and then go away, and you were left with the same perfume. It just felt a bit disjointed for me. Um, and mm. that's not his. Mm. Yeah. That's not even his thing, is it? His thing is like no. overly fucking processed, like you know. Well, I don't know that it was him actually. I, 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 I need to check, but I think uh, the elixir was done um, when they were sort of taking a break from each other. So ah, I, I, well, there uh, you go. Uh, he, um, yeah, that would make sense. I, I may be wrong about that. I may be no, wrong. That would but, make sense um, because uh, um, it that is exactly um, that is exactly what I feel. I, I don't feel he would do that. Like. Uh, his his oud that he's made for them, Nuab of oud, is as smooth mm. and like molecular and all that kind of shit that all his other stuff is. That is that is a brilliant perfume. That is a fucking amazing perfume. Like I oh, need I, that. Thing. I love Nuab of oud. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. No, that's a great one. Um. In fact, I might dig that out for tomorrow. Uh, yeah, it doesn't say on Fragrantica uh, whether or not it was by uh, Geza Schoen, which actually is a good... Okay. Uh, I think that's a good indicator that it was not by oh. him, actually. Yeah. Um, anywho. Right, what else is on your list, There's James? There's three more, and I will whiz through them. So I wore L- 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 Loewe, uh Agua de yep. Loewe L. <laughs> Poor arm, I suppose. Agu- Do you know that one? Agu- <laughs> Dil- no. It's in like a kind of frosted, it's um, very 90s. I think it came out in the 2000s, but it's a very 90s aquatic uh, vibe. I love it. I love it. It's got like a mandarin-y kind of like top note, a little bit like bergamot mandarin, and then it just sort of takes you into like the best version of a kind of 90s floral, I, I uh, 90s like kind of citrus floral, you know, CK1 mm. type aquatic thing. It's I, I love it. It's my favourite one. Uh, uh, Loewe. No, really. I think Loewe makes some really good perfume. Yeah, it, it's stunning. It's uh, stunning. And it's really kind of like with that like slight lean to the orange, you get a little bit more, feels a bit more Spanish. I don't know if that's just like me, um, but it's very light and cheerful and playful. There's not too much cologne. There's not too much of that like salty sea bullshit. Uh, taken over there is that obviously but it's a very deliberately constructed to be different to all those other kind of perfumes and i i think it's excellent i i really enjoyed wearing there's one it. there's one with uh there's one with uh 70 left for 11.95 on oh eBay. get that it's amazing dude Ag- agua de agua de agua l de is, 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 it, l. is it that one uh, that's the women's one, I think. Is it? Is that the men's one? 
Uh, it's E L. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Cool. Right. I might have. So to. then I wore uh, right. Mubasan oh. on. Mubasan, which I think you would like, Dan. So keep your eBay open or whatever. Um, because <laughs> this is an expensive <laughs> night. Is it, it kind of resembles that weird, like, is it in Dubai or somewhere? There's like a ship like looking building that looks like a yacht or like a schooner or something. Oh, the Burj Al Khalifa. Is that what it is? Um, I'd, I'd, anyway, it looks a bit like that, the bottle. The bottle's very interesting. It's kind of an irregular shape. Um, and obviously, Mubasan are the... Um, do they make jewellery or they make some kind of like little uh, bits and bobs, <laughs> you know, like ex- accessories yeah. and stuff? So they're, they're, they've Things. obviously had these... Trink, trink, trinklements. Yeah, these like... Bits these and bobs, like bespoke, trinklements, efforts. Um, bottles. They're really cool. And uh, in fact, the flanker, the sport one, which is like came out years afterwards, uh, is done by the same perfumer as an Amouage uh, be- beloved or beloved uh, arm <sighs> man. Beloved man. Uh, it's done mm. by the same perfumer, uh, and I, I think it's a lot cheaper version and you'd expect it to be. Uh, but anyway, that's a flanker, so forget it. I think you'd like this, Dan, because it's a really big fougere. It's got a kind of chocolatey note in the top that then turns into patchouli. So it's, uh, it's, it's a lot like uh, all those classic like fougeres. It's a little bit cheaper. You can smell that it's not as refined as a, you know... Um, uh, invasion bar bar oh, and which one is any, it anything like that you know that of that sort of ill which, which one is it james it's called mubison i have Mubison just... paris om 22.95 oh that's a funky looking bottle yeah. as well i just got out of my box of things to sell a mubison oh i don't think it's that one woman do no i know no. but i'm just saying that it's it's interesting that you're talking about that brand because it was cheap as fucking chips on eBay, and yeah. it was nice, but I wasn't like, I need to Yeah, keep that's Yeah, that's kind of what they're like, do you know what I mean? They're not, like, blowing anyone's fucking skirt up. Um, yeah. It, it, this is m- Mabusin Hong. Yeah. Mm. Eau de Toilette. And it, 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 it looks, it's got a weird dagger shape. I'll send you a link to it, and you can tell me if this is the right one. But if it is, it's £8.60. That's probably right. On, on eBay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think I got mine for like nine ninety nine because there was a big thing. There was like some kind of, you know, when all the influencers go, Tune oh, my in. God, it's so cheap and exciting. And then you buy it and you're like, no, yeah. it's not. So it's a lavender. It was just like everybody. That. Tune in for cheap perfume. Yeah, like a lavender tonka <clears throat> fougere uh, with uh, a, a, a distinct patchouli note. It all smells very cheap. So think about it in terms of the materials that we tried the other week, yeah? <laughs> So this will be like a kind of underlying sort of rubbery kind of patchouli-esque vibe. Probably, you know, uh, more of that sort of molecule kind of thing than actually the real stuff in there. And you'll see how it's mm. like, yeah, like a cheaper version of those things, but it's still good. I think it's still well-crafted and it's a decent perfume and it doesn't do my head in because some of those... Uh, fougeres are a bit oppressive too much warmth in the base and it kind of mm. it feels really heavy and stuff and this doesn't so I, I like it uh, then today cool. I'm wearing um, uh, Love and Look by Ed Hardy is that the one that is meant to be like one of the creeds Millicene Imperial yeah. M- yeah yes it is meant to is be it? like one of those creeds now there's supposed to be huge batch variation with um, the the creeds, uh, as as we know. Yes, indeed. Um, and the, we, even with the uh, the, the Millicene Imperial, it's might have changed a lot. The last Millicene Imperial I wore was supposed to be like a good vintage bottle, whatever the fuck that means. But like, uh, I think maybe before it went to a gold bottle, maybe. And I wore it, and I found it a really messy musk i did the the top notes were like i remember it being this fresh lovely kind of uh invigorating kind of citrus thing for a while and slightly floral and then into like a musky warmer base and i was like yeah i've always liked that perfume nothing wrong with it same with loads of other creeds that are similar to that 
This, mm. I wore it the other week and I was like, this is rubbish. It's really, like, it's not, it's not good. It's not fucking, it's not good at all, right? And I was really annoyed because This I was is like, the Ed Hardy one you're talking about. The Melissa Imperial. The Ed Hardy one is not good. So oh, this right, is a okay. genuine Sorry, yeah. Millicene Imperial from the golden age of like when it first came out or whatever. It's meant to be a good mm. one. And I thought it was shit, right? And that was a sample that I just got just to try because I was like, I haven't tried it for ages. Let's see. And then I got a uh, another version that Rich Mitch sent to us. We got some samples recently mm. with a, a Millicene Imperial in. Yes, yes. Um, and even compared to that, I prefer Love and Look. Oh, wow. <laughs> because it's got nicer top notes. It's it's more fleeting. The bass is clearly not as like strong and pronounced and stuff. But the, the top notes are better. It smells better. I don't understand. They're like literally like a fiver or something. I don't even know what I paid for Love and Look. It's a piece of shit. But like, I just think that it's one of those really simple formulas that like took the industry by storm for some reason and i don't get it i don't get it there's no there's not much of a redeeming feature to it i think it's really sort of tacky it's not bad still wore it and kind of enjoyed it in a sense but it's not good and it's like mm. just hit on something it's like they they just hit on these things and you're like why why does that resonate and this doesn't and yeah it's just weird yeah Yarp, yarp. Yeah, cool. All right. Well, I shall add that. This is turning into an expensive night for me. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm now sort of hunting you down spent Gucci about 14 Pour on quid? two. What the fuck are you on about? <laughs> no, 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 no. I think the Gucci is going to cost me a bit, a bit more. Uh, but then, yeah, the Mubison, the uh, the Lueve, and the Ed Hardy, they sound like uh, things I'll have to buy in the name of science, of course. Um, right. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, you, it's quite a cool looking bottle, though. So, um, <laughs> so, so we are up to date then on the full fourteen, um, which uh, uh, brings us to news. And there was some news uh, this week, uh, and apparently, a washed-up old hack has decided that he's no longer going to talk about perfumes. Uh, it is. It is au revoir, bon voyage, uh, so long and see you to Luca Turin. Um, I uh, barely give a shit, uh, but others apparently do. Fliss. Well, I kind of put this up on my Insta, kind of expecting just people to go, yeah, whatevs. And it actually ended up being one of my most kind of interacted with posts. And there was like a huge like chat about it everything varying from i really don't give a fuck all the way yeah. through to yes but and a lot of the yes but was about you know he was whatever you have to say he was the og influencer he was writing in print before any of us were writing on you know facebook groups or insta or whatever and it's kind of this is the idea that we are all you know, we're all hacking now, but he started it. Then there was a lot of conversation around him being quite bitter and angry about a lot of stuff. And a lot of his opinions were quite vicious. Um, and then other people just going, well, actually, they were all really funny as well. So there was this kind of mixed bag of kind of, I think, bemused. I think, And when I say bemused, I think the bemusement was about the fact that he had announced his flounce. He flounced. But announced it as opposed to just like yeah. you know, pot pottering off like a sensible person. Flounce and bounce. Just in yeah. case he, he announced his flounce, yeah. Um, and yeah, I think you know, for me, before Insta and Facebook and all of that stuff, the only thing I had were his books, and he paved the way for other similar books. And for that, I kind of have to say thank you. I think we really dug into it when we did the tune. Inquisition stuff about maybe he smells better than he writes, uh, or he writes better than he smells. You know, whichever one you prefer. Mm. It was. Yeah. It, I think. I think whatever you have to say, it's the end of an era, even if that era isn't for you. And it, it's it's interesting 
the amount of people yeah. that came out of the woodwork to have well, an opinion. And I quite, I enjoyed their what opinions. What's interesting is that, uh, I, I, again, I sort of jokingly said, like, good riddance and stuff. I respect the guy. I think he, you know, I enjoyed uh, many of his reviews, um, you know, and I think he's a good writer and stuff. Um, but uh, I think, like, as far as, I mean, I, I wasn't aware of this, but I seen I haven't seen him around or read anything of his work for ages. And uh, I was talking to mm. Brooke, uh, shout out to Brooke, and she said, well, as far as I know, he hasn't published anything since 2018 anyway. So, like... Yeah. That's so, what I was going to say. I didn't even know exactly, he was still around. Exactly, for him to suddenly come yeah. out in, like, 2023, like, fucking pretty much halfway through and go, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm taking me back home and, you know, there's better things to life than... Po-. I'm reading between the lines here, obviously, you know, uh, paraphrasing mm-hmm. what he said. But, like, he's ba- he's basically done that. And it's like, well, where have you been, mate? Do you know what I mean? We didn't even know, like, you're so fucking irrelevant now, like... Uh, that we don't even know, like, because yeah. he started doing those YouTube videos, which were very good, actually. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, shush. He's come in my room. He's puked on the floor. Yeah. The f- cat. He, he must have come in here before. He's puked under my desk, I can see. And now he's fucking wind. Nice. He just popped out of a box. But yeah, I, I, I do feel as if <laughs> a little bit as if he has, you know. He's flounced in at the last minute and gone, by the way, I'm leaving. <laughs> Thrown his feather boa over his shoulder and, and swished off. And we we're like, were you even here? <laughs> yeah, it's precisely. Yeah, he left. And then, like, just to make sure we all realised he left, he came back to tell us all that he's leaving. I'm surprised yeah. that yeah. there weren't comments like, oh, you're not a fucking airport, mate. <laughs> a lot of people say that, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's not an airport. There's no need to announce your yeah. departure. Yeah. That said, that said, darling Luca will always have Theo Fennel. So for that, I thank you. Yeah, you know. and, and uh, I'm I'm sort of in... You know, you said it was the end of an era. It, it's like it was the end of the 2010s. It was like an era yeah. that nobody gave a shit about. So, like, you know... The, if it was the end of the 90s or the end of the 80s, I'd go, oh, yeah, no, I'm interested in that. The end of the mm-hmm. 2010s, it's like, nobody cares. Um, um, yeah, and I, I think the whole flounce, the coming back after five years to announce that he's flouncing just seems utterly fucking ridiculous to me. Anyway, yeah, yeah. what can you do? Right, uh, we've been yapping for a good long time now. Uh, any final thoughts? Oh, James, can we not talk have- about the Nasamate bottle? For no. Mother's Day. No, because it's so fucking annoying. <laughs> oh, what the fuck is wrong with these I, people? I've got some I news. Um, right, James. Uh, we'll talk about the NASA matter in a second. News. James, go on. Uh, Johnny Depp signs $20 million deal for the uh, Dior Savage. Oh. Apparently signed a oh. new, re-signed a new three-year deal for $20 million. Uh, to be the face mm. of uh, Dior Sauvage. So this is after they dumped him with the whole thing thing. Did they ever no, really they dump didn't him? Really yeah, dump they didn't. No one really knew what went on there. Like, Kylian Mbappe came in for a little bit. Didn't I think they? They that's the same thing as being dumped. To see which yeah. way... But then they sort of went back to it, didn't they? Maybe they just kind of like used Kim, Kylian Mbappe just as the short term sort of plaster while exactly. all that shit was going exactly. on. Exactly. They were hedging the bets. Yeah. 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 Uh, will there be a mega point? Um, <laughs> that's all I want to know. Will there be a, a mega, mega pint, pint? A mega pint a of sausage. A mega pint of wine. <laughs> I love uh, yeah. a mega pint of sausage. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Right. Um, okay. So that's great. I mean, Johnny Depp uh, uh, has uh, managed to find twenty million quid for uh, uh, you know. Uh, uh, They're mugs, mate. Yeah. I'd do that for like hundred. Hundred quid. Yeah, <laughs> I could have saved you twenty million quid, you dickheads. <laughs> well, nineteen million nine hundred ninety thousand nine hundred pounds, to be sure. Um, plus, I don't need all the lawyers' fees. You just send me hundred quid and use yeah, the uh, use tenors. Yeah, indeed. Um, 
Good. Right. So, yes, go on then, Fliss. You want to talk about this? Thing? I don't Ghastly want to talk about it, but I saw face. it today because it is Mother's Day and there was just this whole load is of it? shit on. Well, it's not here for the UK, but it is oh, in thank America. Fuck in a, for yeah, that. Thank fuck. Um, but in, uh, in, in <laughs> yeah. America and, and in uh, other countries, it's, yeah, it's Mother's Day there. And there has been a whole load of like Mother's Day stuff coming up on Insta. And Nasamato have done this advert of their bottle, and we all know about their bottle. Um, but it's got a baby's milk bottle teat on the end. And it says, Happy what, Mother's Day. Of a penis. Well, no, in addition to it, it's on the bottom yeah, don't of it. them up. So you've got, oh. you've got the cock on the top and then the baby's bottle at the bottom. Uh, there's so much Maybe going wrong with it. I was just there. like, <laughs> uh, yeah. I literally was like, nice. just uh, in terms of so, so, everything on, sorry, it's, that's it's, it's, wrong. It's a, it's a, it's a double ended bottle with a cock on one end and a teat on the other. <laughs> it looks that way, yeah. Uh, it's so, there is so much wrong that I, I'm just, I'm just like, as a marketing tool, whoever is going to look at that and go, oh yeah, I'll get me a bottle of that for Mother's Day. Oh. Just no. Mum, no. mum, look what I got you, mum. <laughs> look, just look at that. The yeah. fuck is this, son? Uh, well, I don't know. Like just see, it came up on my own. Amazon sent you one of them. <laughs> but I just feel like the uh, shock factor has just gone. Cock on the other. <laughs> just through the roof now. <laughs> that that, that whole. I mean, we've talked about it in the last couple of episodes, but that shock factor of what they're doing is now so distasteful. It's not even funny. It's, I'm not, it's I'm just not like this. shocked by it. I'm no. not. I'm not remotely shocked by it. I'm just. It just has such a sort of whiff of kind of desperation to it it's just like, i think that's it right because i don't i'm not like shocked or upset or anything but i'm almost not moved by it in fact yeah. i would say i'm not moved by it but like you are right with the desperation it's almost like how can we like that someone's told them and they like whispered in their ear like oh, if you stir up some controversy that works really well on social media you know people will share that and they've really tried really hard to try and make something controversial or whatever and instead well, I suppose they've worked because we're talking about it, so... Yeah, but, I mean, I'm not going to buy it and I would certainly not recommend anyone else does, but, no. I mean, uh, it, it's it's... It's the same school of edginess as as Aaron Terence Hughes calling his perfumes things like slag and yeah, you know, yeah. fanny or whatever they were, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> boss bitch and you know slut. Like really, it's like what what are you like fucking? 14 years old edge lord it's just yeah. ridiculous like, <laughs> yeah, just fucking gr- grow up you just want to sort of slap these pricks and say grow up it's it's not you know i'm not shocked i'm not fucking you know offended on some level this isn't i'm not mary fucking white house over here mm. i just find it 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 just is so childish and so Desperately, it's like attention seeking. Someone just needs to give these people a good fucking crack across the chops. That's what I <laughs> And with your and guns, breathe. you're the man to do it. Yeah. Absolutely. Check out the guns. Yeah, no, my, 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 my right gun is currently bleeding profusely, so uh, that's no. not ideal. Uh, having spent the day uh, getting more tattoos stuck on it, there's now blood and everywhere so anyway um right are we done with news because i can't talk about nasamato's <laughs> double-headed dildo bottle anymore it's just <laughs> yeah, fucking... it's <sighs> right uh okay I, in fact bottles as well aren't they so it's not even a you know it's mic- yeah. we're talking micro penis on the end of that bottle yeah. well there's there's more there's more dick and teeth than there is perfume i just that that's, I that's hope so. <laughs> I know, probably so more too. enjoyable <laughs> yeah. uh, and on that slightly weird note, um, <laughs> yeah, oh fuck, yeah, no, let's just wrap it up before it gets any worse. <laughs> it's it's really bad, guys. Um, okay, I'm so sorry, sorry. I have uh, mentioned it. <laughs> right, oh, Jesus, I'm sorry if you've had to listen to all of that. Uh, do stick with us. Uh, part two will be better. I promise. We'll be back in just a minute. Stick with us.
Hello and welcome back to part two of Les Odorants. This week we are talking about snobbery, um, which is a word that I think is going to start sounding increasingly weird the more I say it. Snobbery! Yeah, no, it's already weird. Um, so, uh, Google, this is how fucking much research I do, by the way. Um, Google, which is where I looked, defines a snob thus... A person with an exaggerated respect for high social position or wealth who seeks to associate with social superiors and looks down on those regarded as socially inferior. James, are you a snob? Uh, I'd say it's funny listening to the definition because you only... <laughs> no, because, no, because you can only be a snob if other people are feel as though they're on a lower thing. So it could be their perception of it. You're not really being a snob. You're just being your usual fucking self. But because people are at slightly lower status than you, for whatever reason, class, whatever you know, whatever it might be, then they have you assigned them lower status? Well, no, so. no, I haven't assigned them. I'm just saying that from that definition, that is what it implies. Because the, it, that is definitely that snobbery has negative like connotations, and that's fine if that's what the snobbery is. But it's the it's the difference between you and somebody else. So if you're on, if you feel that somebody is on the same level as you, then you're not snobby. You don't come across as being snobby with them. So it's a weird thing, isn't it? You know, I mean, I might. There's another definition here, which is one who is convinced of his or her superiority in matters of taste or intellect. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you know what I'm getting at, though? I do. The snobbery wouldn't necessarily exist if, like, there wasn't a person to feel it. You, you know, yes, I, I, I get what you're saying. Uh, I, I mean, let's let's go around the houses and see whether people think of themselves as snobs or or not. Fliss, do you, you think of yourself? <laughs> uh, and I should, sorry, we should probably just interject the word perfume. It's you know, yeah. perfume snob. We're not talking about you know your your general uh, uh, snobbishness or otherwise. Yes, I think that there has been huge periods of my collecting life where I have definitely indulged in snobbery in various forms. And now I'm currently at a place where I am so snobby about designer stuff that despite going into boots or the, per you know, I walk past the perfume shop three times a week. Have I ever gone in since I've lived mm. here? No. I walk into Boots once a week. Do I ever sniff a single frag that's in there? Even though there are tons there that I don't know, do I sniff a single one? No, because I'm a, I'm a snob when it comes to designer frags. Hands up. Mm. I am. Hands up. <laughs> Take me away. <laughs> you can arrest me, <laughs> Your Honour. Uh, excellent. Okay, so, yeah, you you freely admit to snobbery. James, yeah. James was equivocating, I think. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what I was going on about, but no. Am I a snob? I'll answer you. I've been a bit of a fucking politician here. Uh, yes, I probably have engaged in snobbery. <laughs> Sorry. I've engaged Sorry. in snobbery. Yes. Well, there was one incident where I did engage in uh, a, a little <laughs> snobbery, uh, but it's not really a lifestyle choice. No. Uh, ben, 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 are you a snob? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 But, I mean, yeah. it's all relative, isn't it? But, I mean, yes. Um, I don't think I am. By the way, really? I, I, yeah, no, I, I, I mean, people have said I am, but you know, they're fucking peasants, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so their opinion is uh, is worth fuck and all, uh, as uh, Ben so politely put it. Um, no, I, I don't. I uh, so um, I think that the the main sort of point of being a perfume snob is this kind of thing where you know you will only. You know, you limit your behaviour because of some sort of perceived social status, and and often that results in limiting your behaviour to not wearing or trying designer perfumes, a la Fliss, mm. or not being prepared to to wear something that doesn't cost a certain amount because of a yeah. perceived status. Of that. And I'm sort of, I feel like, uh, I feel like I don't really care that much where it comes from. I'm happy to. I'm happy to 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 wear really cheap perfume if I think it's really good, you know. And oh, that's, totally. That's, that's, that's it. Totally. I mean, I I kind of I I my snobbishness is kind of a weird snobbishness because I will actually I will seek out those 
amazing bottles that cost 20 quid, like, you know, uh, Paul Smith Rose or, you know, mm. Slightly dodgy, Dana Taboo, you know. But there, there's <laughs> very, there, very there's dodgy. a load of stuff that's twenty quid in my collection that I will happily trumpet uh, and tell people about. But there's when people say to me, "Oh, what's your hobby?" or "What, what when you when I sort of like I might mention that I've got to go and record a, a podcast." I go, oh, what are your podcast about? And I go, "Perfect." And they go, "Oh," and I kind of have a strap line for myself, which is hang on, if you can buy it in boots, I'm probably not wearing it. I I don't say those exact (laughs) words. I don't say those exact words, but as a kind of caveat to what they think that I'm interested in, it's like, not like that, babes. It's not like that. And my, in, within my explanation of what I love about perfume, this kind of accidental snobbery has happened and now I kind of am living it and I if it's in boots I don't buy it <laughs> but it's not but, but it's not about status it's not like no. it's, it's, so so I'm the same I'm exactly the same I think I, I I don't care about designer perfumes the last designer perfume I smelled I hated and I couldn't give two shits about what new like new thing diesel was released this year like for no. Christmas because it's probably going to be shit why I would caveat my snobbishness is that it's nothing to do with status or class Mm-mm. or price or anything. It's everything to do with the fact that modern designer perfumes just do absolutely fuck all for me because mm. it's all shit. And it's just... And is I think it all also, shit or are you just a snob? Wow. Both. I think both, it's both. both. See, that's the thing. Both can be I, I true. Think I, am, I think I am a snob to a degree because I don't really care to give it the time to investigate no, but it is shit. Like I know, like I, I don't need to give it the time to investigate because I know it will be shit. I've got mm. a whole heap of samples. <laughs> I've got a whole heap of samples right on my desk, like Valentino, uh, C, Black Opium, Eternity for Women, uh, J'adore, Parfum Do, all of this shit. And I'm just like, they've all kind of like they've come to me within other swaps, and I put them to one side. And there's a little box of designer testers that I just am never ever going to test just because they've got those designer labels on them I'm like nah so am I I'm, <laughs> am I going to like totally like go wow. against myself now and say that actually what's the Valentino because the one of those <laughs> ones that came out recently was quite good it was quite good it was, yeah it would um, not be like out born of in Rome, that's though, it yeah like born in Roma I quite like that um well, I, just just to come back to something Fliss was saying before, I can't really remember. It was like other people's perception when you say you're into perfume or you were talking about doing a podcast. So they kind of project their own sort of like insecurity or like they think that you're, oh, you're that perfume like person. You'll be dead. Like, like they'll say something like, oh, I just, I wear like blue de Chanel. But you think that's shit, don't you? Or like, you know, that's like fucking. And it's like, no, I don't think any of that's, st- it is shit, by the way. <laughs> and you, you don't not. know what the fuck you're talking about. But no, it's not shit. Um, it but no, that's a that's a bad example. But people kind of like <laughs> say that's that they expect you to be more of a snob than you actually are. You're like, no, I've got shit that was like fucking four pound that I love. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? That's excellent and I can appreciate. So no, from from that perspective, I'm not a snob. But from certain things that I moan like mo- you know seemingly are moaning about with perfumery, maybe some people would categorize me as a, 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 a snob mm-hmm. and they might be right you know and i feel that snobbishness and sometimes that's good sometimes that's a good thing to have that means you have standards you've got like certain qualities that you won't like e- even just like certain brands that i see that are too no too many fucking people have been given this for free or whatever it, it like again not to keep coming back to mm. that but it sort of cheapens the brand for me and goes no maybe i would have given you a chance but now i'm kind of like no fuck you and then sometimes I might return to it and be like, oh, no, you know, it's all right, or whatever. I don't know. I don't know what to well, say. Well, no, uh, things that have got, like, uh, for me, I'm really snobby about, like, in, in an anti-snob way, any bottle that's got too many crystals on it. I'm just like, no. Yeah, and there's, there's, a, a, there's a reason that I stayed away from Mr. Dove for a long time, because I just, I just think his packaging looks a bit cheap. So now that, I know there's still, some lovely things in there. But that's for, still snobbery. I yes, mean, it, it is. Uses, absolutely yeah. is. Absolutely. And, and, that's what I'm saying. And, and, and actually, you know, I, I think uh, on reflection, whilst I'm sort of quite happy uh, to sort of take a democratic approach to perfume where I will wear stuff that's cheap i mean the reality is i do enjoy finding some sort of rare 
discontinued treasure or, mm. or or wearing something incredibly expensive knowing that there's almost no chance of me running into anyone else certainly not mm. in in my own house uh, wearing that <laughs> not that i ever go out anywhere but uh, which is sort of pointless but um i i guess there's a sort of snobbery but it's not it's not as linear and obvious as as just kind of hey, uh, this is expensive, so look at my fucking shiny possessions. Um, I think the snobbery that I do have is the same snobbery that I have in in every regard of uh, my life, and, and it's an intellectual snobbery. Um, I, but, you know, I'm not... <laughs> You know, I am not the smartest person in the entire universe. I don't, I don't believe that for a second. But I, I fucking hate stupidity and like stupid behaviour. That said, I obviously waste all my money on perfume, so that's arguably stupid behaviour. But I thought you were going to say I'm not the smartest person in the universe, but I am the smartest person in any room. <laughs> <I've ever. laughs> ever. Well, no, I, it's I'm I'm seldom the smartest person in any in any uh, room. Um, most of the rooms uh, I'm in uh, at work are filled with kind of like brilliant fucking savants who who kind of know uh, uh, technology kind of inside out, and and I can't keep up with them. At and all. when you're at home, your um, wife's there, so she's exactly, also very, exactly. very smart. She's, she's smart, and uh, yeah, she has uh, uh, she has a reasonable tolerance for my bullshit, though, as as she'd have to. Um, but uh, it, yeah, I I, f- I find the thoughtlessness that people uh, um, I'm quite snobbish about the thoughtlessness. That, that some people sort of take around perfume, particularly, you know, I don't mind that people who, you know, Joe blogs in the fucking street doesn't think about perfume. That doesn't bother me at all. You know, I, I don't expect everyone to go around with perfume on their brain. It's the people who claim to be into perfume that are thoughtless about it that I'm mm. quite snobby about. If that, if that, I mean, does that make any sense at all? What I'm saying there. Yeah, no. I, I yeah. present a situation. Well, no, I want to present a situation, right, and and just see what you how how, how you feel about it. Um, like you're in a shop or something, like walking along the street, and a guy walks past you, uh, or you know, a girl, whatever, and they're wearing a perfume that's so fucking basic, it's unreal. Like, does that make you instantly want to just smash their skull in with a like, but <coughs> two by four, or do you just carry on with your day? Um. I, I'm I'm more interested in your answer than mine, to be honest. <laughs> um, I I want to smash that skull. Yes, yeah. I, yes. I sort of thought that might be your answer, Ben. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, I very seldom want to commit violence upon people uh, because of their perfume. Okay. Is that just me then? <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah. I don't know though. Sometimes you can like, yeah, I know what you mean though, Ben. Sometimes you're just like, oh God, is, is that what you're going to smell like today? That's, that's yeah, just really yeah. un- uninteresting. Um, mm. I can't, it annoys, <laughs> me, like it annoys me in a way because like the, uh, the other day I was walking to the shop, there was a guy that smelled fantastic. And I said to him, Oh my goodness! Who you know? You've just he was he was wafting towards me in the wind, and his wife was standing next to him, so I wasn't going to be weird. I said, "You smell great." And he went, "Oh, my wife's just given me this," and he couldn't remember the name of it, which was a bit sad. Because, but it was a delight to be able to pass a compliment on to someone who clearly his wife had given him this lovely perfume, and he did smell great. And I was really interested in what he smelled like. Mm. In the same way, you can go into a shop and you can stand behind someone, and you're just like, "Oh, it's Savage again." Yeah. And I find and that, that like, uh, and, and it's a bit like listening to loud music in cars. The people that do it are always doing the shittest thing. So, like, people listen to loud music got in the cars. Fucking indicator on. <laughs> well, <laughs> people listen to loud music in cars, listen to shit, you know, music, and people who wear like perfume that you can smell on the other side of the street are always wearing Sauvage. It's just the laws of the universe isn't it? <laughs> yeah, the, yeah these are these yeah, are that's kind of how it works ben's ben's axioms the uh, the the, <laughs> the basic tenets of uh, uh, of life as we know it it's a bit of a kind of like loud like a, it's like a fog horn it's like a warning isn't it mm. you know what i mean like stay away from this person yeah. <laughs> uh, red flag it's they clearly yeah yeah. It's it's now we are not all proving flag. our snobbery right now. But we are, but I mean, basically, if if I was still single, if I wasn't married, and we talk, we, you know, we have this kind of like this There's running joke about panty droppers. breaking 
There's hearts breaking oh. across the world now. You didn't to, to tell just... us that that fella's wife was trying to speak to you and you were just like... <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is... Scratch your is eyeballs it, out. It's, 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 it's that we talk about panty droppers and stuff, but there's like do an we? anti-panty... You pa- well, no, but, anti-panty. you know, in, in, <laughs> there's an anti-panty <laughs> dropper. Anti-panty. There's an anti-panty dropper, as far as I'm concerned, because it's almost like you can smell someone and just like, oh, sweet Jesus, no. And I don't think, you know, all of those YouTube guys that do their 10 frags that are going to make your ladies drop their panties realise yeah. that for some people what? there's an anti-panty dropper. <laughs> so so is- I think that's... That is, so So the top 10 lists, right, and, and the top fives, um, five, you know, five niche uh, houses for life and, and that kind of thing. I, you know, I sort of enjoy composing lists occasionally but Mm. it's it's and i don't mind people sharing the odd list but it's it's the sort of intellectual kind of banality of just vomiting out the same top 10 list and and ben was talking about you know the the top 10 fucking blur de chanel's uh last week and and (laughs) i mean the the the, i forget what her name is monica something or other but um she she does this and it's just to me it's kind of intellectually fucking empty lazy yeah it's lazy it's devoid of any creativity and and i that's that's where I am snobby, I'm afraid. I am mm. very snobby about that behaviour. But I don't care if your perfume, you know, costs £5,000 uh, or, or £100. Or, or that I, I should say, I I do know people who spend £5,000 on a perfume, right? <gasps> and uh, which, which uh, you know, it's it's hard to understand that. But weirdly, the people that I do know that do this are super secretive about that. Yeah. They don't mm. tell people, right? And it you is wouldn't, it, would you? Well, fuck me. Yeah, but it's not. It is what not. Daft move. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, but it's not like a fucking. To them, it's not a a uh, mm. a flex because yeah. in order for it to be a flex, you have to sort of show it off, right? It's other people have to know. Actually, you know, uh, just got into sort of conversation with people and they tell me oh you know have you ever tried this tried that whatever and 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 you eventually work out that they own these particular things you go, fuck mm. me um oh, yeah. so like some of the Henri jack uh uh ones that come in the little crystal two piece uh they cost mm. five or six thousand pounds for 50 mil of oil which is mental money. I mean, it's fucking. But then insane. a lot of the ouds as well. You know, there's like a gram of this or a gram of that, and it's it is it soon adds up. Well, uh, oud, oud is a snobby area too. I think I, I quite like an oud, but uh, you know, I don't know. Is it snobbery or I, uh, what? Go on, well, sorry, I James. Think, I don't- yeah, no, I don't want to disrail this. The d- d- disrail the disrail this conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just don't know what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> uh, we none of um, us do. Yeah, I don't want to do. I don't want to derail the uh, conversation, but uh, I, I basically, I think, like, I am a snob. Uh, I admit it. Um, in 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 so much as not kind of to, we're sort of to, sort of to do with our collections or like friends. I'm more of a snob when it comes to like my Instagram or like the content that I like create or whatever. That arbiter shtick that you get on here that, oh, I'm the, I do actually, like, fundamentally, there's, like, an underlying ego that does think that. Mm. Right? <laughs> yeah. It does think that I am the arbiter. And, like, I think, like, 90-odd percent of people's opinions, I'm like, you're shit at smelling perfumes. Right? You're shit at I'm smelling perfumes. Than, I'm, I'm better than you. Right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, um <laughs> This is this is ridiculous, right? I don't know if you ever watched um, Game of Thrones. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. For, from like the first series, there was a bit with um, Lily Allen's fucking brother, and when do you know that bit where he's like fingering his sister on a horse? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he doesn't know Anybody it's his sister at it. that point. He doesn't know it's his sister at the time, but you know, still, and she's quite game for it really for she she knows the score but um <laughs> he goes 
I'm a better rider than you. <laughs> right. And I just thought it was really funny, right? And um, <laughs> where are you going with it's this, like, James? <laughs> I don't even. I don't even fucking know. Right? There's like <laughs> this thing of like. <laughs> I don't even know why I brought that up in the first place. Um, <laughs> um, you just wanted to share that scene. <laughs> no, it wasn't that. It was like the fact that I'm trying to say, oh, like I'm a better like sniffer than you, and he's saying I'm a better like horse right? Just like the most petty. Like I am actually a bit like that inside. Yeah. Um, and I get this look. I'm a t- I'm a perfume sniffer than you. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? um, that's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, carry on. A better perfume sniffer than you. Yeah. Yes. So I'm, yeah. well, I'm fingering my sister. <laughs> I was hoping to jump in before we sort of got to that bit. I thought, yeah, I thought we might had. go and rescue I that. I wish you had, uh, but there you um, go. Sorry, sorry, Ben, say ben, something I, I, So I think that like, like my... No, Ben's uh, going to tell us about how he Yeah, I was going to say, relying on me to say something <laughs> yeah. normal is... <laughs> No, what but, happens is I do a stupid anecdote and then Ben shares like a rip <laughs> dark one about himself. And then that's how we roll. I've only ever fingered my sister on a horse once. Oh is God. how it's about to start, right? I never. No, never finger. I can't even say the sentence. Let's just move on, right? Uh, before I throw up. Have you got a sister? I have. Man? and I did. Yeah, that's, that, see, see, he's got a sister, which is why he can't say it. I don't have a sister. <laughs> right, so, yeah. Oh, uh, God. Um, moving on. But moving my on. snobbishness, I think, is actually more along the lines of what Dan's saying in that it's sort of intellectual snobbery where I look at it and it's, it's I do not, like, like this whole thing with like status, money, and like none of that matters to me. I don't care. Mm. Couldn't, couldn't give two shits about the cost of any perfume at all. And in fact, what I'll come back to in a minute is almost this, I have a degree of like reverse snobbery yeah. almost. But, um, I, I do think like my snobbery comes down to the fact that I think that there are perfumes that are shit and some people need to be told that. And, and, and but my <laughs> perfumes to my taste isn't that. My taste yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. You know, my, I, I, and, and the perfumes that I own are all brilliant because I like them and yeah. what I like is better than what most And my £20 like. pound perfume is better than your £20 pound yes, perfumes yes, and my yes, £150 yes, pound yeah. perfume is better than your £150 pound yes. perfumes. All my perfumes are better than your perfumes. But, Thank you and good night. That, that's, glad. <laughs> that's exactly what I was saying. Everybody should be confident in their own fucking taste and what they love. But interestingly, like what you said a bit, a bit earlier, James, about, uh, um, uh, I think it was, um, you know, Zerjoff and, and giving away free perfumes and free bottles and stuff. I get so, and, and I, I felt it earlier. And so I thought I'd save it for this half. But, you know, in the first half of this episode, I talked about a Zerjoff that I'd smelt this week. I feel some element of cringe about saying, oh, I've been wearing a Zerjoff this week. Because my feelings on that brand are the complete polar opposite of snobbery. Like, I feel embarrassed to own Zerdros because they're a kind of trash brand. Because when you look on social media, they've cheapened themselves by giving free bottles to, like, anyone and everyone that will take them who write awful social media posts opining, like, the the latest release with, like, flowery, ridiculous thesaurus language. They clearly don't know how to put two words together. They're just smashing, Mm -hmm. like, weird words together coming up with these peculiar posts. And now the brand is just shit to me. It's like, you know, I, I look at Zergel and it's just tacky. Yeah. And and that, and that so, like, when I say, like, oh, I was wearing a Zergel, I, I literally inside am dying because I'm going, like, God, what, do, what does everyone think of me? Everyone must think my taste is shit. And, and, and equally, I look at people who buy a lot of Rogers and I just think, jokes. Like, 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 you, you, and and the flexes of the Rogers just crack me up because I just think, guys, what a cunt! Like, okay, so you spent a lot of money, but you've got no class. And, it, and whenever I see people flexing Rogers, I think, yeah, money can buy you a lot of things, but it can't buy you taste. And it's the di- you know, it's the difference between people that buy fashion and the other and people who are stylish. There's a big difference, and I feel like a lot of people who buy Rogers. And buying fashion, but they've got no fucking taste or style. Yeah, um, yeah. I think that hits the nail on the head. I think. I th- so the and it's, so is that snobbery? I don't know. Well, the 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 intellectual snobbery uh, rule I think applies. Um, what what bothers me most uh, about sort of fanboys of any particular uh, brand is that that people apart from Les Odorants. <laughs> Apart from less adherence, of course, uh, is that people sort of lose any 
critical faculties. They sort of mm-hmm. surrender uh, uh, to this idea that everything about this thing with which they identify, this brand, whatever it is, is brilliant and and unassailable. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that that's how you end up with dickheads. Right, people who, people who <laughs> we well, it's true. Uh, but yeah. people who just lack any cr- critical theorem. faculty. Well, I I quite like some Zerjoff perfumes. I have, I think, four or five Zerjoff perfumes, uh, which range between quite liking and really, really, really fucking liking. Um, mm. There are some good ones, um, but. This idea that any one brand, particularly Zerjoff, by the way, who who, who has vomited out more uh, uh, kind of releases than than you know I've had hot dinners in the last ten years, um, you know, can sub, can the idea that all of this stuff can somehow be a masterpiece and brilliant is just kind of it, it just says that you are intellectually fucking numb. If if that's what you yeah. believe, it, you know, you, it means you don't know anything about perfume. You've just surrendered your fucking identity to this to this brand. It's pathetic. Yes, yeah. I am a and snob. The, <laughs> the, the thing is, is that when you look at Zerjoff as a brand as well, like they are kind of intellectually void, aren't they? They are. They mm. they don't really have any heritage. They've basically like sort of like squirmed their way into a, the luxury sector. Uh, it, you know, they're only really a step down from Creed, in my opinion. Like, it, mm-hmm. you know, as far as kind of like fake, inauthentic, tacky brands go. Um, but I do like some of their perfume. Well, obviously, yeah, quite, quite, quite like a few perfumes. of them. Yeah. But yeah. I, I don't know. But then is that snobbery again? Like talking about Zerjoff like their shit just because, you know, of all these things? I don't know. Uh, so, yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, I mean, it, it's snobbery to to kind of, I guess, uh, uh, try and, I suppose, dismiss an entire brand or style or, or, or niche or whatever it is based purely on some sort of uh, uh, perceived status. Um, yeah, I think it's easier just to say it's it's the people who, who have like a total fucking blind spot and just, you know, they, they cannot accept uh, that anything this brand does mm. um, is anything other than incredible. Those are the idiots, uh, in my view. I, I mean, the brand I can take or leave. I, th- I I agree with everything you said, by the way. I think it is pretty tacky and, uh, uh, you know, the faux sort of luxury uh, is, is bleh. It's a bit bleh. Don't care. Mm. Um. Yeah. Anyway. Um. What else? What other snobbishness can we uh, uh, unleash upon our unsuspecting so, listeners? Like, I feel like, like as Les Odorants, you know, we we started this podcast. Even if you look at our like kind of mission statement, if we had one, it was to be a little bit more like long form and have like discussions that are a little bit more <laughs> like in depth and thought of than top ten Blair de Chanel's mm. for summer or whatever. Um, do, does that make a snobbish bit? Because do the YouTubers do they have? A, I mean, they have <laughs> I their place. Was, I guess. Sorry, you know, sorry, I mean, clearly sorry. they do because people watch them. Fucking God knows why, but I, I think, yeah, I think even the YouTubers have been sort of, uh, you know, it's it's been kind of usurped by like TikTok mm. and those kind of like YouTube shorts and shit like that, right? Where people don't have the attention span. And I was always one who was like don't make your YouTube videos too long because if you haven't got loads and loads of interesting stuff to say, it's just going to be fucking boring. And my attention span, if I'm not like grabbed or engaged by somebody, then fine. So I don't even think it's really the YouTubers because I don't particularly, YouTube has never really been a place that I've gone for fragrance Mm. stuff. I would much rather read a review, Mm. cleverly written or wittily written or whatever by somebody than I would sit there and watch a video of them, even if they were equally as charming and entertaining and whatever on the video. Uh, and that's kind of saying something, because I am much more of a visual person than I am a book reader. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. I'm like a film watcher, <laughs> you know? Um, that's so interesting, I, I, though, because I agree with you, James. Yeah, but, I think that, that when I look yeah. at, if I'm looking at a perfume 
to blind buy or just to be interested in, I absolutely go to long-standing bloggers as opposed to go to YouTube and and search it on YouTube. So, you know, there's a number of people who write extensively that I will check out first. Even just to come back to the snobbery, I won't even do that. It's not like what you've just said there is like, oh, if I want to check out a perfume and I want to see... Sometimes, yeah, I will see. I'm not completely devoid of that, but I'm like, I don't even, I don't even <laughs> care what other people have got to say about it. That's how much of a fucking snob I am, right? That it's like, I, I kind of, I could be interested in it, and I could, you know, take it in or whatever, or listen to other people. It's not that I'm like, it, but, but I just, I don't even go to it for that. I don't. That's not what I need to take from it. It's interesting to hear somebody else's perspective always, right? Even if they're you know, I think they're wrong or I think like they, they, they don't know what they're talking about or whatever. It's still, it's still interesting to, you know, listen to it sometimes. Mm. Um, but I think I'm even that like, it's not like my kind of level of like snobbery is that even if I've like consumed somebody's like article or whatever, I'm still like, it's not as good as mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not really. No, but I'm just like, I, I don't. I, I've got beyond the point. Like I don't know when it was. Like I, I'm still involved in this community, and I'm still like supposed to be kind of, you know, it's supposed to be an exchange of like people's things. But I genuinely don't really read people's thing with, with that in mind. Like I don't go out to seek their opinion on something before I get mine. It's almost like a spoiler. It, it, do you know what I mean? I'm kind of like, oh, I don't necessarily want to hear about a perfume that I haven't. So I'm even more of a fucking snob in that regard. Because I don't even seek out the media to, like, you know, to get opinions on stuff before I try it. So, so what about the hierarchy then between of Fragrantica and Base Notes? Like, Base Notes is sort of a more uh, like like respected platform for reviews for me yeah. than Fragrantica. Like, oh, Fragrantica just might as well just fuck off. As as and and. Sort of about snobbishness. I tend to look at Fragrantica and I'll read a review because I'm like the same as you, James. I, I, I and Flitz, I, I don't watch YouTube videos anymore. I just fuck it. I just, I just, I'd rather read like ten reviews and and collate the opinions. But generally speaking, I will collate the opinions, and if they're bad and they're full of people saying I don't like this, it's shit. How can anyone wear this? It's disgusting. Then you go and buy the thing. <laughs> yeah, because I think probably this is pretty good then, because all of these cunts have got no taste compared to me. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> and so that's. Not what do you think about someone like Parfumo or, or something like that then? Or oh, I like Parfumo. Yeah, I think it's exactly. actually one step higher than base. I was about to say notes. that's higher than base notes, isn't it? But then, you, yeah, but then yeah. there's some bloggers as well that I think so, like people like Bois de Persele, ja- Persele, Bois de Jasmine, uh, Saf Le Bon, all of that stuff. I think Saf Le Bon is <sighs> shit. I think they're Saf awful. Le bon is shit. They're just filler. Like whenever. I look for a review and find theirs. I always feel like they're just like the the, the thesaurus stuffers. Do you know? Like they're just yeah. like they, don't they, get me started. They post on them, a picture right? of, a, of some weird like 18th century artwork and then fucking like oh yeah, it's <laughs> just like this 18th century artwork. And let me just fill it full of hey, this flowery language. Chat that makes GPT, no sense. give me a thousand words on this yeah. fucking person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and then at the end, well. oh, by the way, we're giving away the sample. Comment below. And I just think, yeah. how the fuck are you respected? Because this was trash. I came away well, from this tra- review tra- with nothing. Yeah, I, I feel like uh, I must be a bit of a pleb now because I'm still noodling around on Fragrantica. It's my go to for most things. Um, but mostly not because I want to read the reviews, actually, just because um, it's the quickest and easiest way for me to find out what the notes in a given perfume are. So um, that's that's all I'm, I'm really that interested in. Um, but, uh, yeah. Just on that, I, I hate Fragrantica. I think it's rubbish uh, compared to Base Notes. Base Notes was the first one that I started on. But again, you know, I had a few altercations with people and, you know, got like banned and had to do a different account. Um, but anyway, uh, so that was like years and years ago. But then like now um, I went on Fragrantica when that kind of like was in its sort of infancy. And then I've just I've just always gone on Fragrantica because the interface looks nicer. It's a bit easier to navigate than other websites. That was the only reason that I had a preference for it. However, the people who are on there are like the most knuckle dragging fucking morons in the co- sorry everybody but uh, in the in the like forums and everything they're just fucking idiots man there's no like there's a few hardcore people on there who are okay everybody's got like 
an alternate thing, but bass notes tends to be a little bit more kind of knowledgeable. I don't know what that I, I do one think is. it's gone downhill. It uh, used to be, I think yeah. Fragrantica used to be better than it is now. What annoys me on Fragrantica, and I'm snobby about, is when people go, oh, I haven't tried it yet, but I bought it last week. I'll report back when I do. Yeah. Well, Why allow are you me to. My time? Why is that? <laughs> allow, allow me to hold my breath. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, right. oh, exactly. Okay. I was like, oh, well, now you've written that. I can't fucking wait, babe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, yeah. On that usability note, and this is sort of going slightly off topic, so I won't go too far, but um, bass notes, has anyone been on it recently? Because they <laughs> have abused their forum to the pieces. It's unusable at this point. Uh, Every three posts, there's an advert. So you get three, uh, yeah. three topics, advert. Three topics, advert. So if you want to scroll their forum... It's it's unusable. They mm. just gr- completely made unusable by greed. So so um, on the subject of reviews and such, um, one of my uh, least favourite things, which I'm sort of quite snobby about, is where people reach uh, for knowledge uh, that they don't have. Uh, people sort of uh, claim to know more than they do, and and I'm I'm quite sort of uh i try and be quite upfront about this right that i don't really know a great deal about perfume i know more than the average twat in the street but i don't really know a great deal about perfume i just like lots of perfumes and i've had the opportunity to smell a lot of them and and so i you know i've developed some some basic thoughts around it. the the old uh, the old electrons are shooting as uh, Ben said last <laughs> week. You know the synapses they're just kind of like popping off and stuff. Um, but it's when people sort of pretend to know more than they do. Is uh, this the genesis of your Aaron Terence Hughes hate? Um, mm. you, do you know what I th- I think actually it might be it might be this is uh yeah yeah I I I find. So what bothers me most about Aaron Terence Hughes is the embellishment, you know. It's it's not enough for him to just say, yeah, uh, I did a degree in chemistry and then I moved into uh, making perfumes and I found I quite enjoyed it and I've made some nice ones, here's my perfumes. No. He has to create this entirely fucking exaggerated narrative about everything uh, that he's some sort of perfume savant uh but it's not just it's not just him uh i mean it, um <laughs> so i was looking at um an advert the other day that came up for uh you know we mentioned in last week's episode uh, this clone house this shitty clone house mm. where is it i i used to be dumb in it and now oh, i yeah. smart and it's a bit, it's a bit like ali g sounding um and uh, I was looking at one of their adverts, and someone had. Um, it was like, "Do you want to buy this or buy that?" And it was a picture of, uh, you know, their Aventus clone versus, uh, you know, Aventus. And someone had written, uh, "Just <laughs> it's brilliant." Just said, "Ambergris, folks, look it up." And that was their comment, like, "Oh my God, this person's so clever. They've heard of ambergris, and and, and that's the difference." It's just, ah, uh, I don't know. Just, I immediately felt sort of icky, and you know, not quite moved to violence in the same way that Ben does, but certainly kind of grossed out, and and definitely, I felt intellectually somewhat snobby at that point. Mm. Do you think it's safe to say that our mostly all of our snobbishness comes from an area where we, it's just because we're really into this subject, and I think everyone becomes a sort of a snob about the subjects that they're into. Like I've always had yeah. it, and always hung around people that do it. Like you know, with sort of like you know, like music, art, mm. writing. Mm. everything like you know like like it just seems to be that it's exactly the same yeah yeah exactly and it, the same it, it, I, the more you get into it the more snobby you become almost by default just because you've amassed a degree of knowledge that you perceive as more than others mm-hmm. so therefore you sort of instant you sort of become this sort of snob because you sort of can't help but look down on other people who have somehow you know 
put less time in or, or whatever. So, uh, I, yes, right. I say absolutely yes, but there is a counter to that, which is that I find it terribly rewarding to get people into perfume. And, uh, and I think... The idea mm-hmm. of snobbishness is is about elevating your own personal sort of uh, status and, and and standing. Um, you know, almost like pulling a, a, a true snob would, I think, want to pull the ladder up behind them. You know, this is mine. Mm-hmm. This is this is my area. I've filled it up. You can fuck off. You're you're a fucking povo. Yeah. But but actually, I rather like getting people into I perfume. Think- I think if you got someone into it, though, and then they became more of a snob and they started slagging off stuff that you liked and started going, you'd be like, I fucking made you. <laughs> <laughs> I created you. I, Wouldn't you? Exactly. I, I could destroy you as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you were working as a waitress in a cocktail bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly that. Yes. Yeah, no, I think there's probably some some truth to that. Yeah, uh, it's not happened yet. We're all like that. We're all fucking horrible, aren't we? <laughs> We're all just, yeah, well, uh, I what a reassuring note that is. We're all just horrible. <laughs> Welcome to the Zodrants. Uh, we're all horrible cunts. Um, well, so I would like, I, I, I think I would sort of disagree with that because I, I think, yeah, we are sort of all horrible about it, but we all also uh, uh, admit our limitations. Do you know what I mean? Like we all admit that we're all pretty fucking shit, really, at this sniffing business. Do you know what I mean? We're 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 just a bunch of amateur. Apart from James, maybe we all say we're just a bunch of amateur huffers that don't know what we're fucking That's talking true. about. That's true. Thanks, thanks, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but no, no. But the thing is, right? Yeah, what you're saying is absolutely right. And sometimes I think to myself. How can how can you determine with your flowery fucking uh, review? How can you determine all these different things that I I can't? And it's not even like oh you can and I can't, and I don't think that people are capable of doing that. They are, but I, certain people that I know just aren't. Right? <laughs> and I'm like, th- th- there's that level of like snobbery where you're like, I don't think you understand enough about the fundamentals and the materials and whatever. And you don't have to know that stuff. Don't get me wrong to be a really good reviewer and a really good commenter on fragrance. Some of my favourite writers, some of my favourite, like, like Centosaurs, right? Shout out to Katie, yeah? Centosaurs, she writes a review and she doesn't even mention notes or fun- you wouldn't even know it was about perfume, right? And you just read it and you're like, oh my God, this is like, this is like the best. It's just like genius fucking people like that. And, and it still conveys the perfume to you but in a way that you would never even think in your life. Yeah, and it's really like, you know, shit like that's really rewarding. It's fucking art, right? It's art surrounding the art that I already love. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, 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 like, I, I love that, that people are creating, like, really interesting, like, content. They don't even know they're doing it. They're not even doing it to create, like, content a lot of the time. They're just doing it because that's who they are, uh, and that's their response to some art like happened to them and that was the response they like created some fucking art that's interesting i think i'm also quite snobby about the content that i follow and there's a number of i'm going to be honest now there's a a number of people i follow on insta that i don't follow because i've muted them because i'm bored of the blandness of their content and there's other people who i have starred people like uh love is ascent who just she her photographs are exquisite her collection is exquisite she's got beautiful taste she writes intelligently for me I just there's a different quality to the artistic nature and her creativity around her response to perfume that makes me go yep I'm gonna star that I'm gonna star that content creator have you muted me of course not darling I, you're starred. You're triple starred. Triple starred. <laughs> and if if you don't come up quickly enough, I search for you. Oh well, this is this is reassuring. This is heartening. <laughs> uh, this is heartening. I I am heartened. Uh, excellent. Um, okay. In what other ways are we horrible? I'm finding this episode all a bit depressing. It turns out that that you know we're all horrible cunts, and uh, I'm kind of. I'm like, fine with that. I'm a bit sad. No, I, I, I'm completely oh, yeah, fine yeah, being yeah. a horrible cunt. And if you want to wear your shit perfume around my house, yeah. I'll happily batter your skull in with like. A, 
<laughs> Don't come round my house with that horrible shit. Um, what? So, so apart from the obvious Bleu de Chanel and Sauvage, is there is there a perfume that someone would wear that would make you go, "Yeah, you are a worse person than me." Is Any creed. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's me, double fuck, <laughs> isn't it? Can I, I can't pat your just, skull in, sorry, though, just, Dan, just, Dan, so don't worry about that. He his knees, just, though, yeah, I'd have no fine. chance. <laughs> so, sorry, I've Jane, just say something, something sensible. right there for a second. So, it's, it's not sensible. Hang on a minute, so, that is uh, sensible. Creed is shit. Let's, let's, let's do something nice. Let's, let's yeah. stop talking about what assholes we are. In what way are you not snobby? I mean, I, I personally love sending people uh kind of samples and and stuff to try and and try to fucking uh, you know democratize it a bit and and get people into uh niche stuff that i like and mm. uh, and, and and i i do take your point uh, you know james if if they ever became you know more powerful than me i would have to strike them down um <laughs> yeah you know I, i'd have to i'd have to fuck them up for being like bigger and more impressive than me but uh, in the meantime i like be- i like bringing people up from uh, a, a zero base to a level just below me i think yeah <laughs> in all seriousness i i'm joking around saying that but obviously we all have those little hang ups however uh, i do think that like it is fun to introduce people into the hobby and, and it's not even introducing them like um, I we've got some like friends of like the kids because obviously they all go to school together now and we're all like in a WhatsApp group together and it's all nice that all the kids like hang around together and like different people can do different activities and stuff and some of the 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 the, uh, the other dads one of them works in the perfume industry one of them just wears loads of perfume and loves perfume He's like you're the perfume guy aren't you and started just like coming, and I was like wow like obviously it gets around. Um, and it's interesting because they're not even people who are like new to it they already know stuff and like it's interesting to meet kind of people who are outside of the usual suspects in the community if you like the people Mm. who are sort of vocal and speak to you online and stuff because there's loads of people who are fanatical who don't do that as like me and fliss and whoever else know that it hasn't always been about like social media Mm. it's like there there was a, a time not before that, but well, there was a time before that, obviously. But like, it's not the sort of be all and end all. I don't know. It's it's a different landscape now, and it's changing all the time. Um, I guess that's that's it. Mm. I mean, I, I think like my snobbery really ends when you know I stop being hyperbolic and 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 really I wear any old shit, like you know, like like, and I don't really care. And and as much as I kind of like. I do have those feelings. Like everything I've said, it's not. I'm not lying. Everything I've said, I do feel on a level, but it's not a very serious level. Do you know? Like it's, it's mm. not going to keep me up at night. At night, you know, when I walk past the guy on the street wearing the the shit perfume, I might fantasize about murdering him. It's, like, it's gone <laughs> two steps later. Do you know what I mean? It's I not serious. F- fantasize about it a bit. So the FBI don't need to come to my house. Like it's yeah. not serious. No, um, no, you know, no, no, none of it's serious. Like, and I, I, I'm aware that I don't know fuck all about perfume, really. Yeah, you know, I, my outside of my own experiences, like I don't know nothing. And you know, I, I think it's been interesting though to kind of like deconstruct your own headspace around this because it's really easy to go, oh, I'm not snobby. I've got a twenty quid bottle of this, but actually. Mm, maybe you are a little bit and that's kind of interesting to kind of even just to air is like oh okay it's nice to know your own foibles i think i think the thing i'm definitely not snobbish about is is like status or brands because perfume yeah. has never been about status for me anyway no. and so i really don't care about any of that stuff like i take that- great joy in in sharing cheap good ones mm. or whatever you know Do you you think it's like, um, because you said about, like, we've said this a few times now, and I I say it, everyone says it, that, oh, we don't know all that much about perfume, etc. What do you mean by knowing about perfume? Do you mean, like, knowing about the history of the perfume or the notes? Or do you mean, like, knowing about it in terms of, like, the smell and your perception of the perfume? 
or knowing about it like emotionally like how does it like mm. connect with your like feelings and shit like all of those things like what is knowing about perfume maybe that's like i don't know another stupidly kind of like it's quite a philosophical question. Well, so but the moment you lay it out like that, it's like, well, I just, I basically don't know anything at all other than what I like. And mm. then, yeah. and then, then my snobbishness is just literally my taste. <laughs> She's yeah. like, yeah, we yeah, yeah. It comes back. That's where it all comes back to your personal taste, which is no way of judging other people's, like, it, that's why there can't be a, like a hierarchy of it. There can to some degree. But, like, there's so many factors that go into it yeah. that, like, it, it, yeah, it becomes, like, a bit... It just purely does come down to taste. And then when you're saying that other people's taste is bad, that's where, like, some people have a problem. They're like, oh, I don't mind people saying I don't like them doing this kind of content or I don't like them doing that. But when I differ in taste, you can't, like, slag somebody off for that because it's... but. I think you can. <laughs> no, I, I'm going to stick I, my flag in for you. You can. You you can do that. Yes, I think you can. I think you can. I think um, uh, you know um, some people just have shitty taste. You know, it's uh, it's just a fact. Um, it's not for their fault. No, you know? no, they were just born uh, uh, with you know lower social worth. Um, it's, it's not really <laughs> their fault. Um, <laughs> But um, I, I was thinking, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I, at various points, people have levelled at me the suggestion that I uh, am terribly snobby because I am, uh, I am in, I'm, so, I gravitate towards uh, expensive perfumes, right? If mm. it's, and and I think, I think I'm, I'm, I'm probably. Uh, I'm probably not too fucking proud to admit that when something is expensive, <laughs> you know, I am at least kind of my interest is somewhat peaked. And I'm, uh, yeah, and I'll be like, reassuringly mm, expensive. I think they call that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and sometimes, you know, expensive stuff. Um, I don't know. It, 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 there is maybe a, a a bit of kind of exclusivity thing to it and hey you know i've got this thing that nobody else has or whatever and, and maybe mm. that is snobbishness I, I don't really care but um i guess uh you know throughout all of it my, my kind of motivation does still remain that i really like the perfume i you know mm. i don't own any perfumes that are expensive just because they're fucking expensive you know mm. I, I wouldn't own something i didn't like just because it was expensive um but as usual i feel like we've not really massively moved the dial on this debate uh, i mean i think we're probably all agreed we are uh, snobs, snobs. <laughs> we are snobs in some uh, way but actually the reality is that pretty well anybody who's enthusiastic about anything is in some sense a snob you know they, they're going to end up becoming uh, snobby and possessive and territorial about their well, particular uh... taste in a week that we've seen the biggest snob of all, Luca Turin, fucking basically <laughs> like commit fucking Harry Carry on you know online. Mm. Uh, I'll just say you know R.I.P. to the fucking snobbishness, and uh, let's let it die with Turin, <laughs> and uh, yeah. you know that that's it we're all snobs to a degree we're all hypocrites to a fucking degree oh yeah no no that's that's absolutely true uh everybody let's just you know everybody let's is all hypocrite. fucking get along no, but we can't stop definitely. reviewing otherwise we won't be a podcast exactly <laughs> uh, yeah yeah but Turin has stopped because he's dead yeah <laughs> so let's well, just he's, get certainly, that he's certainly dead to us um anywho yeah, he's dead to us right well i feel like uh it's been a uh, thoroughly enjoyable debate i i am um baffled as to how we got onto the subject of um uh uh you know Sister fingering, frankly, there's no better way. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't, I don't really know how that happened, uh, but I blame James, um, and uh, and I'm glad My that bad. no one shat in their pants uh, this week. So this uh, week, yeah. So so you know, it's been. 
<laughs> Swings and roundabouts, as they say. Swings and roundabouts. Um, any final thoughts on being a snobby cunt, Ben? No, I think, I'd, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll try and, you know, I'll, maybe I'll use this episode to endeavour to change, but it, it probably won't happen. So if you've got bad taste... <laughs> what are you going to change? Just be careful around me, really, because yeah. I'm yeah. apparently prone to violence. Indeed, yes. That, uh, yeah, I think violence committed upon people with bad taste is absolutely uh, fine. Yeah. Uh, Fliss, final thoughts from you? Um, my final thoughts are that I still have impeccable taste. And mm. yeah, if, if you don't, I'm really sorry about that. Well, taste is like, <laughs> taste is like uh, uh, fucking... Um, it, 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 nobody thinks they are... So nobody thinks they are a bad person. Nobody thinks they have bad taste and nobody thinks they're an idiot. Yet statistically, mm. uh, you know, most people uh, are all three. Um, so, ah, uh, damn! Damn! Damn it! Damn it! <laughs> um, I, I, I read a survey once that said, um, uh, like, uh, uh, 75% of people think that they are of above average intelligence. So, well... <laughs> uh, mm. Some of you is wrong then, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's... Uh, yeah, anyway, I don't know why that uh, came up, but uh, it's better than half the other subjects we've covered today. James, <laughs> any any final thoughts from you? Don't say Not the really. thing you're going to say. Um, no, that's it, really. I just wanted to kind of... I thought it was quite poetic to finish on the Turin thing and yeah. bring that back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, that's it, really. Yeah, like I say, I think... Uh, we're all snobs to an extent. We're all hypocrites to an extent, like I said. And that's it, really. That's all you can do. Well. Just got to... Oh, but also, maybe just a little bit of snobbishness is fun. Let's be honest. It is fun. It's, it, let's it is not fun. get depressed by it. Let's just revel in it and just... Own it. Yeah. Own that shit. Own, own, yeah. own it. Bite the bum of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck just happened there? Just uh, bite the ball. Like, you know, just go like, like a peach. You go, ah. Uh, bum, no, bum okay. Biting. Yeah, we can cut weird. this as well. It's fine. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. No, 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 Fliss. You don't get away with it that easy. Yeah, yeah, we bring the cows in for milking and then we bite, bite their bums. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> what? What? <laughs> I have no fucking idea. <laughs> on that note, yes. uh, on that, on that, on that very, very <laughs> weird note, I, I think we wrap it up there. Right. Well, uh, it's been, it's been uh, a weird experience this week. Uh, so uh, we'll be back in, well, I hope in two weeks' time with more snobby bullshit on uh, less odorants. Catch you next time. Bye. 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 Thank you.